Channel 5, KSTP-TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis. From the St. Paul Civic Center Arena, it's the 1981 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Now, for the start of tonight's tournament action, here is Bob Bruce. Hello again, everyone. There's a view from high atop the St. Paul Civic Center. This is Bob Bruce, back with you for more action of the 1981 High School Hockey Tournament. Tonight, we've got quarterfinal action between South St. Paul and Dinah West, and we've got Irondale and Rose Oak. Now, working with me up here in the booth is, of course, the coach of the Olympic gold medal winning hockey team, and that is Herb Brooks. And Herb, it's great to have you back with us again. And, of course, to my left, the one and only voice of the Minnesota North Stars is going to be the voice of the 1981 High School Hockey Tournament, and that is Al Shaver. We've got a couple other fellows who are on our announcing team for this tournament. Let's first go downstairs and check in with Ed Cairo. Ed. All right, Bob, back at the same old stand. We'll be talking to some interesting people tonight, among them Willard Eichelow, former coach of Edina East, uh, Lou Nanny, Herb Brooks' favorite uh, international roommate, lots of folks like that. Let's go right now, though, to Rob Lear. Chad, again, we will be talking in and taking a look at some of the fans that will be part of another record crowd here in the evening session of this Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. There's not a seat to be found here. All the standing room, all the reserve seats are taking. The fans are now on their way into the arena to enjoy what should be another evening bracket of great high school hockey. Bob? Well, we're back ringside, and thank you, Rob. And uh, here we go. Two games this afternoon, both in overtime, and both are broken by two good teams. And tonight... A rivalry that goes back almost 20 years, if you want to say, Dinah South St. Paul. This is going to be a barn burner. We're going to be ringside with some of the interviews. Stay with us. Have a good time. And now we'll throw it up to Bobby Bruce, and we'll get ready for all the action from the high side of the Civic Center. Take it away, Bobby. Well, both teams are on the ice, South St. Paul and Edina West, and we'll be back with the start of this game. Right now, let me remind you, you're watching some of the exciting action. This is the 1981 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. A TCF saver like me really goes to that generous interest you get with a TCF pass card checking account. Well, I see the Twin City Federal 2 alerts, but now I can also enjoy a TCF checking account. I like the fact it's a savings account. Well, I like the fact that it's a checking account, too. It's a savings account, Lou. It's a checking account. Savings account, Lou. It's a checking Checking account. account. Saving. Checking account. What did I start with? You st you started with checking. And <laughs> hey, this is the last, com hey, last commercial I'm ever doing with you, Lou. Really, that's the only... Why strain your back removing harmful fashion? The inexpensive Thatcherizer can loosen the thatch, and your snapper mower can bag it in one easy step. Thatcherizers fit snapper self-propelled walk mowers and riders. Get a Thatcherizer only at a snapper deal. Anywhere you cut it, it's a snap with snapper. Trade up to a snapper now at your nearest snapper dealer. They say you Ford guys are really after that sales championship. We're ready. Have you seen our cars and truck? Fantastic. We've got big sales incentive programs from Ford that could save you big bucks. We're ready. What about financing? We're ready with the best possible rate. Right now. We're ready. Well, you better get out there and do it. We're ready. Those Ford guys, they're ready right now. Better see your Northland Ford dealer today. I can show you how to reach more of your market by phone. I'm a Northwestern Dell telemarketing consultant. I make the difference. One of our dimension systems could help your business become more efficient. Let me look into it for you. I'm an account executive. I make the difference. I take care of your system. If a problem develops, we may be working on it before you know about it. I make the difference. There are lots of people here who feel like lots of people here. live at the Civic Center, Bob Bruce along with Al Shaver and of course Herb Brooks. And for those of you who weren't with us this afternoon, 
You missed two outstanding hockey games. Bloomington Jefferson eliminating the defending champion from the championship round. They win it in overtime by a score of four to three. And then almost a repeat of that first game, Apple Valley coming back to beat North St. Paul in overtime once again, the score four to three. So Bloomington Jefferson will play Apple Valley tomorrow night in the semifinals. And then, of course, the winner of this game and the winner of our letter, later game will comprise the other bracket of that semifinal match tomorrow night. Edina West, number one in the state, 22 and one, only one loss. That coming to Grand Rapids. They lost one to nothing to Grand Rapids earlier in the year. And South St. Paul, 22 and three coming into this game. Well, how do you see it, Al? Well, I think Edina West will win this game. And I think Edina West will advance to the uh, final round, but I think that they will have a tremendous amount of trouble over Irondale, who I think will defeat Loco in the next game. I think Irondale could be a dark horse in this tournament. Well, let's go down the year in it. First, let's meet the champions. I agree with you. It's going to be a great matchup. Edina West uh, favorite in this game, but first, let's meet the South St. Paul Packers who are going to do everything in their power Goalie, to topple number the number one, one team Tom in the state. Seberg. Number one, Tom Seberg. The goalie, backup goalie. Defense uh, senior. Two, Tom, Tom Mikotowski. Tom Mikotowski. On defense, defense the senior. Number Sophomore, three, Randy Schuler, number Schuler. three. Schuler, number three. Defense Eric Flom, number, number four. Tom. He's a senior. Number five, defense Steve Svig. Played last Way. year. He's a senior. Phil Housley, this is a man you got to watch tonight. He's going to be a, a key when it comes to South St. Paul. Phil Housley, number six. Paul Gallus, number seven. He's a senior. Herb Badalich, number eight. He's a winger, a junior. Sophomore, Jamie Roberts, number 12. Wing number 10, Rick O'Brien. Number 10, Rick O'Brien, a winger. Center, number 11, Larry, Larry Housley. Housley, also a fine, fine player. Number wing 11 number is center. Tom Stiles on the wing. He's a junior, number 14. Wing number, number 15, 15, Peter, Peter Bauer. Bauer. Sophomore, Dave Sabaski, number, number 16, 16, the next player onto the ice. Sebasky. He plays wing. He is a senior. Tom Dalzell, center, number 17, center. Tom Dalzell. a junior, number 17. Wing number, number 18, 18, Charlie Gorman. Charlie Gorman. Number 10. Center. Number 19. Number Jeff 19. Dolby. Jeff Dolby, a center, a senior. And Dolby. then the goalie, number 30, Greg Vander Walker. And there's a story there. We'll talk about that a little Coach later. He is a senior. Doug coach Wood. of the Packers, of course, is Doug Wood, a, a fine, fine hockey Moore. coach and a fine, fine soccer coach, we might add, in the high school ranks. And there you have South St. Paul, and let's meet the record 22 and 3. Here we have the Edina West Cougars making their first appearance here in the State High School Hockey one, Tournament. They'll be in the light jerseys tonight. Number one, Jim Lazinski. He'll Defense be the starting goalie. Two, He's a good one. Tom He's a junior. Rizzo. Tom Rizzo, number two. Wayne, He's a number junior, three, also a junior. Wally number three, Chapman. Wally Chapman. Wally Chapman on the wing. On defense, four, Mike, Mike Spear. Spear. Number four, Mike Spear, senior. A defense sophomore on defense, six, Mike, Mike Roberts. Roberts. Number six. Number wing, eight, number playing seven, the wing. Tom He's Chris. a junior. A centerman, wing, a senior, eight, Mike O'Connor. Mike O'Connor. Number nine. Center, number nine. There he is. O'Connor. Wing number ten, John Deasy. Here comes John Deasy. John Deasy on the wing. wing He's a number senior. Twelve, Tom Vidmar. Tom Vidmar, number twelve center, on the ring. He's a senior. Thirteen, Pat Rolfs. Pat Rolfs. Number 13, wing, number Mike 14, Oliver on the wing, Mike number 14. Oliver. Wing number 15, Wes. Wes Olson, Olson, number 15 on the wing. He's a senior. Defenseman number 16. Back Jeff on defense. Flaver. A senior. Jeff Defenseman number 17, Scott Ferguson. Scott Ferguson, number 17. Wing number 18. John DeVoe, John number 18 DeVoe. on the wing. At center, Dave center, Maley, number 19, who is a Dave junior, number Maley. 19. And number 30, John Bazil, a backup 30, goalie. John Basil. He is a sophomore. The coach of the Cougars is Bart Larson. His assistant, Bob O'Connor. And the coach, of course, is Bart Larson. 22-1, and one, their only loss of the regular season. 
as the Grand now, Rapids and gentlemen, one we ask to nothing. stand and join in singing. Now let's stand as the Adina West both here in the arena and under the direction we're going to listen to the Adina band play in the Star Spangled, the Star -Spangled Banner. Banner. We're just about ready for the opening period between Edina West and South St. Paul. Let's take a look at the goalies now. We see Greg Vandewalker on the left, number 30, and on the right for Edina West, Jim Lozinski. Jim Lozinski. And Al, isn't it Vandewalker that was, uh, is it Vandewalker that was sick? Vandewalker is playing in this game tonight despite the chicken pox. Uh, you just see it. You Nobody heal up real quick when it's state tournament time. Nobody wants to get too close to that crease tonight. <laughs> You're right, buddy. <laughs> there you see the referees for tonight. Oh, I was so happy when I got my chicken pox. It was during Christmas exams when I was going to high school. I was never so happy. You might notice something a little different. There's Edina West around their goal. South St. Paul has the new style of uh, pants on, and we're going to have more of that after this game. We'll have a special story on that, but they are unique looking. Cooper I wall. wouldn't wear those things to a bullfight. I don't know about you, Herbie. <laughs> well, it depends if I was the bowlers. <laughs> <laughs> they look like corridor pants. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. A lot of things are happening in hockey, Al. Yeah, they sure are. Whatever happened to the old breezers? I don't know. I kind of like that Cooper all that's sort of like a football girdle pad. You pull them on over. Oh, yeah? I think those sometimes they look like you're sleepwalking in those. Oh, eh? <laughs> well, we're ready for the first period. The Diana West versus South St. Paul with a play-by-play -play Al Shaver. Referees are Mike Clark and John Bymark. And the puck is shot into the South St. Paul zone. Cleared around to the left side. A centering pass tapped in behind the net by Van de Walker. And now on the right side, they try to come up, but it's broken up and held in by Maley. Maley goes down when he's checked by Zwig. And we're going to have a penalty to Mr. Zwig. Right off the bat, Steve Zwig called for pulling down David Maley. And the tripping penalty comes only 16 seconds into the game. We'll have a face-off to the left of Greg Vandewalker. That was a good call. He had no, no alternative but to call that one, Al. Minor penalty on the South State Hall, number five, Steve Zwig for tripping. Here's a look again. Yeah. It's an obvious penalty. Yeah. It's stuck in there pretty good. From the face off, they whistle it down. They will do it again. Final game tonight has the Rosa Rams against the Irondale Knights. From the faceoff, Plum drives it down the ice, and that'll send the Adina West Cougars back for it. Spear picking it up. Now Spear taking a look from behind his net. Slides the pass to the left side. They failed to get out the first time, and now Spear puts it out to center ice. Phil Housley rip wide to the left, and Plum gulps it down the rink again. Adina West trying to come out now. Maley is taken out by Phil Housley, a great puck handling defenseman. Now Spear shoots it in from center. Back into the right corner, Phil Housley around behind the club. It got away from him. It's fed by Deasy back to the right point. Held in now by the Edina West Cougars. Trying to come in front. At the side of the net, a centering pass. And the save is made by Van de Walker. It goes back along the boards, and Plum ties it up there for a stoppage and a faceoff. 
Well, Al, they look pretty good coming out of that corner on that power play. A little give and go, two and one on the bottom of that box. Mikowski, excuse me, Vanderwalkers better stay on his feet as much as possible. 113 remaining in the penalty on Zwig. The face off to Vanderwalkers left again. Olsen taking the draw for Edina and Plum drives it down the ice. And backboard comes Klaver. Klaver bringing it around behind Lozinski, taking a look there. And leaves it for O'Connor, who swings out wide to the right. This is Mike O'Connor feeding to the left, Chris picking it up off the boards. No, he didn't get it. And it's cleared back out to center ice by Gorman. Now the Dino West trying to come in again is tapped into the game, into the zone. Uh, Phil Housley cleared, but it was offside, and there's a break in the action with the score. Dino West nothing and South St. Paul nothing. Once this car had the knocks and the pings and the shakes. What a difference mobile super unleaded gas makes. Play underway, the puck is in the neutral zone. Claver sliding it to the right now, and it's fed ahead to O'Connor. He's bumped and knocked down by Phil Housley. The puck comes in the zone. Olsen is taken off it by Phil Housley, and Housley has the puck, and he brings it out. He's trying to get away from Lutchek in over the United West line, and he's bumped off the puck by Claver, who then rides him into the wall, and Olsen takes it over. Olsen went wide to Frisk on the left side. Frisk will try to get by the defense, and he leaves a drop there, and now the play is broken up. And the puck is cleared down the ice. Time left in the penalty is down to five seconds. You know, Al, it's kind of an interesting thing. That Michael Connor, his father's assistant coach, Bob O'Connor, and Edina West, and Mike Oliver, assistant coach, Murray Oliver, Minnesota North Stars. Wow. Interesting. And South St. Paul, the O'Briens, and Housley, Slabaskis, Badaliches, you know, uh, Bidatowski, geez, that's, they've been playing hockey in South St. Paul for years. <laughs> that is South St. Paul. Boy, that's for sure. All right, the penalty has expired. And South St. Paul back at full strength as the puck is shot in. Vanda Walker clearing Zwig behind the net, putting it around on the right wing side. Trying to come out as Bauer, but it's held in the zone. Oh, Oliver missed a pass in the left circle. Tries to feed it back to the point, but it's picked up, and Dolby comes back on the left side. He skated off in the neutral zone and falls when checked by Rolfus, and the puck is fed out on the left to Chapman. Chapman along the near board, driving it in. It rings the boards, winding up to the left. Oliver is after it, but Dolly checks him. It's back to the point to Ferguson, puts it back in the corner. Oliver fell as he turned to go after the puck, and Zwig clears it to the left side for Badalic. Badalic headmanning, and what a hit there in the neutral zone. There may have been some elbow in there as Dolby was pulled down. There was an elbow, and the time of the penalty will be 3-0-1, and now the South St. Paul Packers get their first penalty uh, opportunity of the game. And the penalty by Ferguson. Minor penalty on Adelaide, number 17, Scott Ferguson for interference. They're calling it interference. Penalty, interference. Ferguson interference at 3.01. He drills him. Looked like awfully. Uh, could have been an elbow high interference. Out. Yeah, elbow interference. Take your pick. Puck is back to the blue line. Larry Housley deep in the slot, firing, and it is held by Lozinski. Face off will come to the left of the Edina goalie, Jim Lozinski. Now, this is the first team that's gone to. Uh, power play with just one on the point and try to put two in front of the net tipping and screening the Cougars get possession and it's cleared out to center ice following the face off by DZ and now the Packers come in Phil Housley stumbling retaining his balance and the puck feeds it ahead gets it back comes the slot drives the shot he's wide to the left with it puck along the near boards Larry Housley back to brother Phil back to Larry in the left circle fires the save a rebound chance and it goes back of the net and a good chance by O'Brien. O'Brien tried to feed the point, but it's blocked and cleared down the ice. Claver breaking it up back of the net. Phil Housley now. He's checked by DeVoe. Puck comes loose in front and Vanderwalker taps it ahead to Housley. Housley sliding it out on the right to O'Brien. O'Brien poking it in and then Bowling over the defenseman Claver as they collide, but the puck is cleared down the ice. Ah, uh, this is going to be a great hockey game, Al. Bob. Yes, sir. Loose puck in the slot. Here's Chris. The shot and a save by Vanderwalker. And the puck comes, uh, the goal comes off its anchor. 
10.47 remaining, 48 seconds left in the penalty. There's a break in the action with the score. South St. Paul nothing, Edina West nothing. Dial Sports, your hotline to the rough and tumble world of sports. Just 20 cents a call. Well, I tell you that, South St. Paul's going to hit anything that moves tonight. And Edina, they're going to have to play their game. Their assets are skating, and they got to move, move, move. They don't want to get in a physical matchup with the South St. Paul team. Here's another look at that chance, and what a save. What a save by Vandewalker. What a hit. Styles and O'Connor on the faceoff. A shot from the point goes wide. Now Frisk drives the shot. He's wide to the left with it. It's back near the blue line and picked up by the Packers. A long rink-wide pass chased by Dalzell in the left corner, but it's cleared to the line, and it comes out off the stick of Tom Mikatowski. Now it's Wig leaving it for Mikatowski on the right side. Mikatowski brings it over the Edina West line, plays it into the left corner. Backboard is Rizut. Rezut now running into some traffic, dumps it out over the blue line to center. Zwig across to Mikatowski on the right side, tried to play it in, Frisk blocking it at the line. Styles dug it loose, but it's offside. Nine seconds remaining in the penalty on Ferguson. Oh, this South St. Paul team, they're not afraid of any body contact. No, 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 no. I tell you, Dougie Woog emphasizes that, but he emphasized the intelligent aspect of the body and, and uh, the meaningful body contact. They're just not running to hit people. They'll do it as a natural expression of the game. Face off outside the Edina West blue line, and the puck is driven down the ice. And the Packers of South St. Paul come back for it. Plum picking it up behind Van de Walker, yeah, going wide to the three. left now. Checked by Rolfus on the boards. Badalic puts it out to center. Dalby reaches back to get it, backhands it into the Edina West zone. The Cougars are back at full strength. Ferguson feeding up the left side. Chapman steers it to his right. Relayed to the right by Rolfus. Oliver at the line, ran into Flood, left a drop pass, but it came outside the line, and it was brought back in offside by Rolfus. And there's a break in the action. The score, the South St. Paul Packers nothing, the Edina West Cougars nothing. Next time you take a break for refreshment, reach for Kemp's Ice Cream. Thick, rich, heavy-bodied, creamy smooth. Serve a winner. Kemp's Ice Cream. From center ice, Badalis drives it in, but it hits traffic and rebounds out to center ice. Fed back into the South St. Paul zone. Plum puts it out to center. Dolby steers it in. Ferguson picking it up, banking it off the wall. Out to center, comes back in off Plum, but it's brought out to avoid an offside call. This is Spear at the blue line. Shot it in, but it was offside again. And some of the guys getting a little antsy out there. Herbie is getting in there a little too quickly. Oh, well, sure. look who's here. Pat Ritchie. The stair climber. Stair climber. That South St. Paul looks like a big hockey team with those. Maybe those pants make them look bigger. I think so. You know, Edina is not that small of a team. They've got a little bit of size. Oh, sure. Buck in the zone. Shuler unable to clear it out. It's to the right of the South St. Paul goal. Fed back to the point. Claver driving. It hit a skate. It deflects rink wide. DeVoe in the corner to the left. Puts it out in front. And it goes off a skate back into the corner to the right. It's cleared around behind for Zwig. Twig on the left side, feeding it up the wing, and O'Brien clears it out over the line. And the Dyna intercepts, comes back in, and Maley got turned around in his tracks as he took a hit at the blue line from Twig. Now back comes Larry Housley. Larry Housley leaving it, getting it back at the side of the net, poked in, it's brought back in the goal, fed off the boards, back to the point. Twig a shot right off, a rebound, and it's cleared away to the right side by Razoon as he got bowled over. Now the puck is shot down the ice, and we have an icing call against yeah, the Cougars. Right and they'll right. take it back for a face-off to the right of Jim Lozinski. Boy, that was close. Very close on the deflection. There's a break in the action with the score. Edina West nothing, South St. Paul nothing. Write checks. Earn interest. Get both with a TCF pass card checking account. Face off Styles after the puck running into Ferguson. Now it's played around behind the net by Dalzell. On the left side, the Cougars find a clear, but it's held in by Styles. Styles in the left corner puts it in front. It goes rink wide. Plum picking it up off the boards and firing wide into the left corner. Now the Cougars clear to the line and they get it out to center, but they lose it there. Dalzell overskated it, lost it. 
And now Chris Glossett reaches back to play it to the blue line. Now here's O'Connor moving in, and he fires wide as he was knocked off balance off to the left of the goal by Phil Housley. Now the puck along the boards to the right comes back to the point. Spear shot. And that comes out to center after hitting Styles. Right back in offside. And now we have some words being exchanged between the two 17s, Dalzell of South St. Paul, and Ferguson for the Dinah West. We'll have a face-off in the neutral zone with 7.37 remaining in a scoreless first period. Well, the referees, referees Mike Dock, Johnny Bymart for up in the range. Uh, they're going to let these guys play. They're, they'll have good control, but they're going to let them play. From the face-off, the puck back to the Dinah West blue line fed to Claver on the left. And he fires it all the way down the ice. Oliver is after it. Zwig is there first, comes back of the net. Stops to avoid a check. Now he's checked by Chapman. Now Chapman goes down, and it's brought back of the net by Zwig, moving out on the left side, dumping it up the wing. It comes into the Edina West zone, and Oliver is back for it, playing it around behind a Claver in the left corner. Claver takes a heavy hit there as he was caught by Dolby. The puck clears the center ice, and here's a chance. In over the line, Ralston shooting it across to Oliver. This is a shot right on. And the save is made by Vandewacker. From the point, Claver fires wide. The puck along the left side. The Dolich comes up with it, but we have a delayed penalty being called against Los St. Paul. And the time of the penalty is 8-11. And again, the Packers will be shorthanded on the penalty for elbowing. And coming off to the penalty box is Mikatowski. You know, I think, Al, I think the referee didn't see that one. Mikatowski really drilled the guy just before that. Here's the penalty again. Uh, he got him into the net, then they got up. Now he gets him with the uh, elbow right after this. They can catch it. It wasn't the original thing that put the man into the net. It was the, it was the second play after the guy got up. From the faceoff, the puck is driven down the ice by Eric Plum, and back go the Cougars. Spear will pick it up behind Losinski. Play moving out to the left now, and a good hit there. Here's a chance for Phil Housley. We have a tripping penalty being called against the Packers as Deasy was brought down and the Packers will now be two men short on the tripping penalty being assessed against Dave Sobaski. Well, they certainly can't afford this at all, especially against a, a fine skating team like Edina West. They can really crank up that power play now. Yeah, he gets a stick into him pretty good right here. He gets a good shot at him. It's an unfortunate thing. Uh, angles on forechecking is so, so important and and the play broke it up, and the puck is cleared by the Packers. Back comes Spear into the left corner. Brings it in behind Lozinski. To the left side now. Back underway, bringing it out on the left side is Maley. He's tied up at center, slides a pass to the right. And in they come DeVoe, lost it, and it's cleared back out to center ice. The lone forward is O'Brien for South St. Paul. Spear puts it over on the right side. DeVoe tried to center, and it's broken up by Phil Housley down the left side. Phil Housley over the line, got by one man moving in, tried to center. He had O'Brien with him. Now he puts it out to the side of the net, and Lozinski traps it and holds it there. And what a job the South St. Paul penalty killers are doing here. Yeah, excellent job. Excellent job by Phil Housley, Eric Plum, Ricky O'Brien. And right now, here's the time to Phil Housley to get that puck and just rag it, just hang on. Head to open ice. He could draw a penalty, he can kill that time. He's got all the ability in the world to do it. Styles, Wig, and Phil Housley now on for South St. Paul, trying to kill it off as the attack comes out. Olsen lost it when he was checked by Housley, but it's played into the zone offside. They came in with two men, Frisk and O'Connor, but the play was offside. There are 45 seconds remaining. In the first South St. Paul penalty, and 102 left in the second penalty. They're having a hard time getting it going right now, Al. South, or South St. Paul is doing an excellent job, two men short. Puck comes rink wide from the faceoff. Phil Housley to Styles. Styles runs into a check from Claver. Puck is now fed to Frisk. Frisk dumping it to the right. It's brought into the zone by O'Connor. Puts it out in front. A shot. They scored. Uh, 
Johnson knocking it in on the centering pass. And that will bring one man out of the penalty box. Mikatowski, the first penalized player, will come on. Sobaski has 46 seconds left in the penalty time. Well, that was a good goal. You know, South St. Paul played a long time, two men short. Here's your replay. Look at this angle. You should be able to see the beautiful pass put out front. And there's Wes Olsen. Was that O'Connor that put the pass out there? O'Connor. Yeah, Mike O'Connor fed Wes Olsen. Wes Olsen shooting off the pass. And they also give an assist to Frist. O'Connor and Frist assisting on Olsen's goal. Here it is again. O'Connor coming down. The defenseman on him. Centers the puck right across, right Sorry, through two defensemen. Back Walker to the other play. side to Wes Olsen. Yeah. Vander Walker, well, it's Olsen. tough position for him. Time of the goal, 9.41. Number nine, Mike O'Connor. And number seven, Tom Frist. Time of the goal. Styles and O'Connor will take the face off when play resumes. Dougie Woog holding a conference over at the South St. Paul bench. 46 seconds remaining in the penalty on Sobaski. Now the puck is shot in by Mikatowski and Lozinski decides to force a face off. Well, the referee's going to mention it to him. He has to keep that puck moving. There's a break in the action. The score, Edina West 1, South St. Paul nothing. During Ford's 10% cash assistant program, buy a brand new Escort as low as 5418. Choose from 125 in stock at Jerry Palmer Southdale Ford on 494 in Bloomington. There's Stiles down in the corner to the right of the Edina West goal. And the Cougars still on the power play, feed the Frisk on the left side. He headmans the pass, meant for Olsen, got it back, broken up by Mikatowski, loose puck in the zone, and picked up, and here come the Packers with one man back. Styles crossing the left, Mikatowski going in, and a fine defensive play broke it up, but we had a whistle and we have an offside call. Yeah, it's true, he got a little anxious. A little anxious. There's Hell Hank Friends in the penalty box there, an old referee, McAllister coach, been around hockey a long time. Good to see you, Hank. Seven, ses seven seconds in Sobaski's penalty, 4.39 left in the period. Face off outside the Edina West blue line. Larry Housley failed to bring it in. Now O'Brien has it. Shoots it into the Edina West zone. It comes back at Lozinski. And now the penalized player, Sobaski, is on. They puck in the Edina West zone, and out they come on the attack with Chapman in over the line. Leaves it for Rolfus. Rolfus moving in front, slid it back to the right of the goal. It goes in behind the net. Centered for Oliver in the left circle. Plays it back toward the point, turning Rolfus. Fires, and it's cleared away from the front of the net. Rolf is holding it into the right point. Ferguson's shot is wide to the left. It comes back to the left point. And a shot by Spear is blocked by Sobaski. Sobaski down the right side. Feeding a pass to the left. Larry Housley fires. That hit Ferguson. And is cleared away to the right side by Rolf. Is brought back to the net. And on the left side, the pass picked up near the blue line. Chapman relays it to Oliver. And he overskates it inside the blue line. We have an offside call, though, as Oliver actually lost the puck and then preceded the slow moving disc across the line and by the time it got over the line Oliver was offside. 346 to play in the first period one nothing for Edina West. Some good hockey players out there Mr. Shaver. Yes. What do you want. <laughs> you get the first draft. I get the first draft. I get eh? the next 10. <laughs> you know who I take. I take the same guy you take. <laughs> <laughs> Long shot from center goes wide, put in front of the net and picked off. Oh, he fell. Here's a chance. The backhand shot goes wide by Mealy. Mealy at the right of the goal trying to work it out in front, but the play is forced back into the corner. Cleared to the line, but not out. It's held in by Claver. Shot around behind the net. Mikatowski into the left corner for it. Banks it up the wall. Dalzell tips it out and Styles picks it up at center. Styles cutting to his right now in over the United West line. He left it and unable to get to it was Gorman. And the puck is back out to center from Mikatowski. Cross on the left. Now a pass picked off. And Edina West moving in to the left of the goal. Centering attempt comes right in front. A loose puck is cleared away by Mikatowski. A drive from the point. 
And that shot by Razud hit the traffic and sent it out in front again. And Gorman tips it ahead. Styles bringing it out now. Styles shooting it in. Dalzell after it behind the net. It's cleared away to the left corner. Dalzell fell going after it. The puck comes loose and it's fed out to center ice now by DC. Shot into the Packers end by DeVoe. 2.30 remaining in the first period as the puck is fed up the right side for Bauer. Bauer now sliding a pass. It's brought in by Dalby. Dalby's pass hit a skate. Here's a chance in the backhand. And unable to get the shot off was Bauer, who lost his balance and crashed in against the boards. And we'll have a face-off coming up in the Edina West zone to the left of Lozinski. 2.19 remaining in the period. That could have developed into an excellent scoring chance. He just could not get the handle on that puck. Did a little bit behind him. Dalby and Maley, a pair of 19s on the faceoff as the puck goes into the corner. Cleared around behind by Spear. Olsen on the right side with the only goal of the game. Tapped it ahead, but not out. It's knocked back in by Dalby, who fell as he was checked in and bounced off the boards on a hit from Ferguson. Now Ferguson goes in. There may be a boarding here or charge. Ferguson wants to get something going in the corner there. And he is going to take Edina West's first penalty of the hockey game, it would appear. Yeah. Hey. No, no, no. Let him go. No. no way. Looked like he had a pretty good run at him, Herbie, but he ran him. There's they no are going to let him play. <laughs> Scotty Ferguson wants to get his nose in there. I'm telling you, he's coming to play tonight. He's seeing his forwards get bounced around. He's going to get a piece of somebody else <laughs> out. That's what it's all about. Now the puck along the far side. A clearing attempt held in at the line. Plum shot hit traffic. Still in the zone and put into the slot area. Now cleared away into the neutral zone. Plum back inside his blue line. Hit Manning to center ice. Now Larry Housling it over the line. Overpasses Sobaski who goes after the law on the near boards. He's checked by Spear. And the puck is cleared out to center ice. And here's a chance. A chance for a move. Here they are right into the shot of the scoring save. A scoring save on the attack by Frisk. And again, the net has come off its anchoring post. Tom Frisk breaking away. And Vanderwalker took this chance away from him. Oh, great save. play by Vanderwalker. Here's a great view of it, too. High upstairs. Takes it in. Watch Vanderwalker. Oh, great glove save. Got away from a little bit. From the point, Claver's bat last goes wide to the left. And the puck right out to center ice. O'Brien skated off along the boards. Now gets it and brings it in offside. And the faceoff will come back outside the Edina West blue line with 1.15 to play in the period. Well, I like the way South St. Paul is just hanging tough with Edina West. Yeah, just they, tough, aggressive hockey. They're going to have to. They can't let Edina get moving. They got some excellent skaters. But, but South St. Paul can skate. You know, they, you know, they're good on their feet. Ralphus and Housley taking the draw. It goes to the far board. Shot in by O'Brien. It comes back of the net. Poked to the left corner for Claver. Clears the line. A drive by Phil Housley is wide to the right. Oliver will pick it up on the right side and clears it out to center. Rolfus couldn't reach it. Wake puts it back out to center. Now O'Brien in over the line. Runs into the traffic. He was taken out by Rizout. And the puck is brought out by the Edina West Cougars from center. A long shot by Claver was wide to the left. It comes off the boards and Van de Walker decides to get a face off as Oliver was converging rather rapidly on the net. 46 seconds remaining to be played in the first period. It's one nothing for Edina West. What I'd say by Vandy Walker is a big play. He misses that. It's 2 nothing going to the second period. Bailey and Stiles on the draw to Vandy Walker's left. the face off on the far side Dalzell feeds to Styles Styles down the left side he skated off into the boards taken out by DZ puck is cleared to center now dumped across the St. Paul blue line and it deflects up high in the air it's centered into the slot area and brought away to the right side to safety by Zwig who turns back now comes back of his net out the left side feeds Styles with a nice pass right on the money slides it over on the right here Gorman lost control and it's cleared back out of the zone by Deasy at center ice 
And now at the blue line, Dalzell to Stiles. In over the line, drives a shot wide to the left of the goal. Ferguson is after it on the far side. And collides there and down the heavily onto the ice. And now right at the right at the end of the period, there was a penalty called on the far side against the boards, and the Dino West player had knocked the South St. Paul player down and kicked him a little bit after the play. I think it was Dave Maley, and maybe we can check that again on the replay for elbowing. See exactly, they called it elbowing, and see exactly what happened, but it was away from the play, and it, it was not a stupid penalty to take. Here it is against the boards, now watch. Knocks him down. Minor penalty called at the 15-minute mark. On and a little bit further. Oh, I, I don't know if they call that. Let's see. Oh, the, he pushes his elbows out. I guess you could call it on this anything. But in just a second there, he just kind of gives him a little bit of a kick there. Yeah. I went along the boards when Dorman went down. was not the penalty. Let's go down to Rob Lear. Thank you, Bob. Of course, with Doug Wood, South St. Paul coach, penalties got you into trouble on that first at West goal. Yeah, I uh, really wasn't uh, upset about the second one. It tripped me, but the first one in front of that, I think uh, our boy was just turning around and get orientated, and the guy was there, and he ran into him. I don't think that was, uh, I think somebody was looking for one there. Uh, but our guys played hard for a while, and uh, maybe we'll come back with some goals in the second period. Coming in, we heard so much about Edina West's team as a skating club. Your guys have been right there stride for stride. Well, we can skate. Uh, I think uh, we get the reputation of being physical, but we have some finesse players, too. Uh, we, we skated very well for about a minute and a half of that of that two two men down. We had some good opportunities uh, as well as they did. We're not, we're not out of this thing yet. Good luck to you. Bob, back upstairs. Thanks, Rob. That's the end of the first period. The score, Edina West won. South St. Paul, nothing. This is the 1981 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Hurry, Ford and your participating Ford dealers 10% cash assistance program ends March 21st. Right now, Ford will send you back 10% of the base vehicle sticker price on roomy new 81 Fairmonts. 10% back on hot new Mustangs. 10% back on beautiful new Ford Granadas. And 10% back on 81 Thunderbirds. Ford's 10% cash assistance. Hurry, you must order by March 21st. Get 10% from Ford. Amico took 14 benefits people want in gasoline and put them all into one product. Amico Premium Lead Free. It's the higher octane lead free that helps your car start easily in cold weather, warm up smoothly, helps stop engine knock and run on. It's the gasoline with 14 benefits you want to help your car run the way it should. It's one of Amico's two problem solving lead free fuels. You expect more from a leader. Corn farmers, don't use root ratings alone to choose your soil insecticide. University researchers agree that the economic threshold is between 3.0 and 2.5. Research from major corn states shows that lower root ratings do not mean you get a bigger yield. This season, don't depend on root ratings alone. Consider all the important factors and you'll choose Diphenate for best performance and best value. If it takes shellfish to please the seafood lover in you, Red Lobster's your kind of place. Start with oysters on the half shell, then crack into crab legs or sweet lobster. How about tasty fried scallops or scrumptious shrimp? All kinds of shrimp. You say you just can't decide? How about a combination platter? Everything we do is for the seafood lover in you. Red Lobster for the seafood lover in you. Back live at the St. Paul Civic Center, Bob Bruce along with Herb Brooks, and it's Edina West leading one to nothing after one period of play. And as we go to the highlights, South St. Paul, two men short. That's a little bit too much to give up to Edina West. 941, and they come up with a goal by Wes Olson. Yes, I thought South St. Paul at the start of this two men short was doing an excellent job. Now here's Mike who kind of makes a good play, throws a little backhand pass. You know, that's it. That's it, uh, Michael. Uh, the goalie had no, no opportunity to save this one at all. O'Connor, a good feed. Olsen shooting off the pass. Sort of rolled up over the goalkeeper. One zip. Yeah, a lot of people talking before this game thought that this might be a blowout, that Edina West would oh. skate him off the ice. But South St. Paul, boy, they're really aggressive, and they're just 
hitting them all over the place. That's right, Bob. I, you know, South, or South St. Paul has been known as a good, solid checking team. Uh, they're giving a lot of speed factor to Edina West, but I'm telling you, South St. Paul's skating with them. I thought, you know, Edina would be a little quicker, but uh, they're a good hockey club, and they're very smart, very poised, well coached, but South St. Paul can match them, I think, in almost every aspect of the game. This is going to be a great game. In the last minute of play, something very important. Vander Walker made a, a tremendous save on O'Connor, who had the breakaway. It would have been uh, two to nothing. Instead, Edina West takes that penalty at the end of the period. Now, South St. Paul comes back on the power play. That's right. South St. Paul gets right back into it in the first shift out there. Well, I'll tell you, we got a lot more hockey to be played yet. Right now, after one period of play, it's Edina West 1 and South St. Paul nothing. The exciting action of the 1981 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament will continue after station identification. My, you're looking fine and feeling like your number one in the world and all. An all-pro driving a Subaru? Why not? I'm driving one, and in my book, Subarus are all-pro. Front-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and fuel economy at a price you can't beat. And right now, your three all-pro Twin City Subaru dealers are offering record-setting inventories and prices you can't refuse. Now's the time to buy Subaru at your three Twin City Subaru dealers because model and color selection is the greatest. And believe me, you'll make a great catch. <laughs> Lasso herbicide gives farmers two ways to get consistent grass control with just one application pass. Lasso's are very versatile. You can put it on either before you plant, after you plant, whenever your time schedule will allow it. One pass is all you need, whether you surface apply lasso after planting or surface blend before planting. Either way, you save time and fuel and get consistent grass control. Start this spring your way. With Lasso, you'll see the difference. Well, we feel we have the best control of Lasso than any other chemical. The Eyewitness Advantage on Channel 5, St. Paul, Minneapolis. We now return to the St. Paul Civic Center Arena and the 1981 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. There you see one of our camera positions high, high above the ice. I wouldn't want to be working out there. Well, South St. Paul will be coming back on the power play in the second period. They're only down by one goal. I'm sure they're going to get back into this game. You know, the Packers, they've had a great tradition under Doug Wu. And now let's take a look at their home, the home of the South St. Paul Packers, South St. Paul High School. <laughs> South St. Paul is a unique first-ring suburb which blends the old and the new, tradition with change. South St. Paul provides big city benefits in a small town atmosphere. Located on the Mississippi River, it is served by two major highways, rail and air service. South St. Paul offers a neighborhood style of living comprised of well-kept homes and yards, in addition to two modern high-rise units for its older citizens. The world's largest stockyards are located here with a new livestock exchange building. The quality of life is enhanced with a community hospital, mental health center, and medical office building. Leisure time can be spent in the community's 10 parks, ice arena, pools, tennis courts, ball fields, and hockey rinks, as well as at the public library and the new Dakota County Historical Museum. South St. Paul has come alive with change. Within the past five years, there has developed a new sense of community, which is in evidence by a summer celebration and fall festival, Christmas in South St. Paul, and the new South St. Paul Rodeo, which played to 30,000 fans last season. Change is also apparent in South St. Paul Public Schools, which has a tradition of educational excellence. South St. Paul Senior High School has nearly 1,400 students in grades 9 through 12. The newest part of the school includes the Commons area, which is the center of the school activity. Adjacent to that is the Media Center, which has 15,000 volumes of information as well as current research. The curriculum is directed toward the highest intellectual pursuits ranging from foreign language to computer mathematics. The student council plays an important role in the day-to-day -day functions of the school. Steeped in tradition of excellence, the debate and soccer teams have been annual participants in state tournaments. Students also have other choices such as music and drama. Strong vocational courses are available to students which include auto mechanics, 
and other choices such as secretarial technology. Change has been a key in a school system which, in spite of declining enrollment and financial limitation, has kept all buildings open. This has been accomplished through leasing space to agencies such as Dakota County Human Services, located in the junior high school. And rather than closing this elementary school in the heart of the city, the Board of Education, in cooperation with the City Council, developed the Central Square Community Center, including an indoor pool, creative play area, and outdoor amphitheater. A total community of schools, churches, shopping, and recreation makes South St. Paul more than a spot on the map. It's a place to belong. South St. Paul, meeting the challenge of change, where school and community are one. South St. Paul, just a tremendous high school. Well, you know, we have a gentleman downstairs with Ed Carroll at this moment who's in a very uh, unfamiliar position, shall we say, of being a spectator at this tournament. We'll find out more as we go down to Ed. Ed? All right, Rob, and we're, uh, Rob, Bob, way up there. It's getting late, folks, with uh, Willard Eichelob, former head coach of Edina East. <laughs> because the whole thing is going to change this year. Uh, what, what happens? Well, we go back to one high school, of course, starting uh, next fall. And uh, as far as the coaching positions, uh, everyone uh, can apply for the jobs. And there's a selection committee that uh, will select the, uh, the head coach in every sport. Uh, we just finished uh, naming the fall uh, coaches uh, in January. And as far as winter coaches, uh, they'll be named, I suppose, at the end of this month. Mike, what about this Edina West team? Uh, uh, they've come along pretty far, pretty fast. Uh, they got an excellent looking club. They're a fine hockey team. Uh, we played them three uh, three times during the year, and they have great speed. Uh, their forwards uh, really fly, and a good forechecking team, and, uh, and a fine uh, backchecking team. And they have uh, fine defense to go with their great speed up front. And they have a junior goaltender that's really has played well for them all season, right from the first game uh, into this tournament. In fact, he had some big stops in the, in the first period here. So they're a solid team, right from from up front, right down into the goal. You know, I suspect, and uh, we got to leave rather quickly, that uh, people would think that you and Mr. Larson are at war all year, and that's really not the case at all. You're pretty good friends. Yeah, we're good friends. Uh, we fish a lot together and and, uh, and spend some time camping and so forth. Uh, we're very close friends. Of course, Bart uh, worked with me uh, when we had the one uh, high school uh, before our split. So uh, we've been, uh, we've uh, caught a lot of fish together, I'll tell you that. And, and <laughs> they actually talked a lot of hockey, too. We're very close friends. The families are very close friends. I hope you're together behind the bench next year. Ike uh, Willard, Ike Love, Edina East, thank you very much for being with us. Let's go back to Bob. Man has won a couple of championships to be sure. We're going to be back. We're going to have the second period of this game between Edina West and South St. Paul. The score right now, Edina West nothing, South Edina West one rather, South St. Paul nothing. This is the 1981 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Ford sets the pace in pickups. And now during the Big 81 Explorer sale, you can get discounts of up to $600 off America's best-selling pickup trucks when you buy all these great options, including two-tone paint, special interiors, factory air conditioning, tilt steering wheel, automatic transmission, sporty wheel covers, and more. Right now, get the specially equipped Ford Explorer and get up to $600 off. See your Northland Ford dealer. He's ready right now. Bob Carter Ford, AMC Jeep and Renault customers, tell our low-priced big selection story for us. Jody Surratt of Egan writes, After shopping around, I know you gave me the best price on my Pinto hatchback. Bob Adams of West St. Paul, I bought my new Fairmont wagon right off the lot. The big selection made it easy to find just the one I wanted. The Carter low price plus big selection. If they're important in your car shopping, try us. We're just five minutes east of the Mendota Bridge on 110 or South Robert to 110. Bob Carter Ford, AMC Jeep and Renault. There's a hungry beast feeding in your house. It's your own furnace, and its appetite is costing you more and more every day. Your Lennox dealer can tame your heating costs with a new Lennox Conservator Gas Furnace, the most efficient gas furnace yet. Call today for a free estimate from Kronstrom's Heating and Air Conditioning, serving the Twin Cities with the largest fleet of Lennox energy experts. Kronstrom's Heating and Air Conditioning, 920-3800. The North Star's Bobby Smith for Kemp's Ice Cream.
after the action, I go for Kemp's, for sure. The best tasting ice cream around. Bob Bruce back at the Civic Center with Herb Brooks and Al Shaver. We're just uh, ahead of the start of the second period. Edina West leading one to nothing. And a happy lady at this moment because her husband's team is leading in this game. It's the wife of Bart Larson and Rob Lear standing by. Rob? That's right, Bob. You know, we talk to the coaches and get the team's characteristics, but we talk to the wives and find out something about the coaches. And you tell me that Bart's quite a superstitious coach. Oh, he's just one of many superstitious coaches. I think they all have their little things that they have to do. What are some of those things? Well, he's wearing his lucky outfit. Uh, he chose that outfit after Grand Rapids beat us. He had a lucky outfit up to then. And that was back in November. I know. It's getting pretty gamey. I wouldn't sit downwind if I were you. <laughs> what do you do then? Wash the shirt after every game? I have to keep washing the shirt, but I, I wanted to get it dry clean before we came to the tournament. And he said, absolutely not. So it's here, and it probably stands by itself in our room. You enjoying yourself here? I will. It's the third period if our score is still ahead. Thank you. Noreen Larson, the wife of, of course, Bart Larson, head coach of Edina West. Bob, back upstairs. Kirby, did you ever have a special suit that you wore for a long period of time? A special suit? I only had one suit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let alone one or two or three. If I had one, you wore that all the time. Isn't that right, Al? That's right. <laughs> there you Whether see, you're lucky or not, you still <laughs> wore it. <laughs> there you see Edina West going back out of the ice. South St. Paul will be on the power play when we begin the second period. That's going to be a key for them to get back into this game. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, Bob, South St. Paul has that good opportunity now to find that score, possibly at least get some momentum going, get into the flow of things. Uh, I think that was an even period, despite uh, Edina, you know, going up with a very nice, you know, power play. Uh, you know, the West Olson, you know, found that way home. But, uh, you know, it, that power play could be the difference. And that power play could be the difference in this whole tournament. You talk about, you talk about the, the, the goalkeeping, the next thing you're going to have to look at is the how that power play is functioning or, you know, malfunctioning, I guess. Don't forget tonight, later on, right after this game, it's Irondale versus Rozo. And now in that uh, Irondale game, we'll see perhaps the best goalie in this tournament. You think so? I think Downing is uh, one of the best. Well, I've heard I've heard a lot of good things about him. Uh, the kid who played for uh, Breck, yeah. the team that got eliminated, he was a very good goalie. Yeah, he was. He good was. Goal yes, he was. He threw up uh, around Princeton, Minnesota. I think he commutes in or something. Uh, not a real by, you know, a growing hockey community, but not when he was coming up. Uh, very an interesting young man. I know a lot of people are very high on him. He's a happy group. Well, I'll tell you, Al, this power play, it was just like uh, when I had Reed Larson at the university. Give it to Reed, give it to Reed. And <laughs> South St. Paul saying, hey, give it to that Housley kid. <laughs> or give it to Bobby Orr, or... It's hard to screw up those good players, Al. Huh? It sure is. I, uh, but I we like all work hard at it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we, though? <laughs> this uh, is a good chance here for South St. Paul to try to get back into it. They've got a two-minute advantage to start off the period with Scott Ferguson in the penalty box for elbowing, imposed at 15 minutes of the first period. You know, I thought South St. Paul looked like a bigger hockey club, but when you check the... The scorebook, Edina is a bigger hockey club. It's the those, pants. It's those pants. They just make them look tall, you know. And then and South St. Paul plays an aggressive game, but uh, they're going to be aggressive. I think that uh, Ferguson from Edina will match everything they're going to throw at them, I'll tell you. All right, we are underway. The Packers on the power play, and it's brought in over the blue line. Fed to the left point now to Plum. Plum firing. Goal! He scored. It was tipped in in front of the net. Sebasti, I believe, got the tip in out front. O'Brien, either he or O'Brien. We'll have to check it on the replay. It's a good shot. Good shot by Eric Plum. Low on the net. The Dinah didn't clear out. Let's see if we can catch the number here, Herb. Yeah. In front of the net. They move in. Plum deflected. It looked like one off his knee. Sebasti. Sebasti, it was. Number 16, Dave Sebasti. You said it was a big power play, and it was. Here's a great angle of it. Look at this. Right in front of the net. 
Sebasti tips it in, and we've got a tie hockey game. Yep. From Ben Housley, get the assist on it. Boy, that didn't take long, did it? Bill Housley, no, 11 seconds. Okay, it's one all. Both goals have been scored on power plays. 11 seconds of power plays. I used to coach took us 11 years to score. <laughs> they score 11 seconds. You should ask Dougie Wood what he's doing. <laughs> Our power play was so bad last year, Al, we declined all penalties. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's Bailey and Larry Housley back into the Edina West zone. Right out to center by Resute. Now DeVoe checked off the puck, and Mealy trying to get loose. And now it's brought in by DeVoe, left corner, tried to put it out in front and hit the back of the net. Mealy in behind, trying to center, and it's picked off at the left edge of the goal. Fed by Phil Housley out on the left side. And back they come, and O'Brien's pass is picked off, and back comes DeVoe for Edina West. Here's a drive. Jeez. He's way upstairs with that one over the glass, and that may have gone right down the tuba. That was in a tuba, Al. Yeah, so St. Paul Band's right back there. Okay, there's a break in this action with the score tied 1-1. Encounter the Twin Cities' bright new information station, KSTP News Plus Radio 1500. You'll be glad you did. Face off to the left of Vandewalker. And the puck comes to the left wing boards. Cleared out into the center zone by Dalzell, who's after it again. He's checked out, but carrying on Zwig in over the blue line. Zwig firing wide to the right of the goal. On the left side, Frisk plays it off the boards. It's held in momentarily at the point, but knocked off Mikotowski's stick out to center. Now Sebasti bringing it. Puts it in front, and Stiles goes down on the play, and the fans think there should have been a call on that. The play goes right on. Oh, I don't know. And here come the Cougars, moving in with Olsen now. Olsen, a centering pass, and Vandewalker steers it to the boards on the right, Frisk playing it back into the corner. And it'll come back in the net, Kotowski clearing it around on the left wing side now. And it's dumped out by Dalzell, and here come the South St. Paul Packers, a pass put out in front of the net, a shot right on. And it's turned aside by Lozinski on Stiles' drive. And back on the right side, Olsen, leaving it dropped, getting it back to O'Connor. Olsen going right in, and Vandewalker took it away from him. The puck going to the left side. Brought out to center by Zwig, skated off by Olsen. It's back to Ferguson at the blue line. Ferguson starting up from there, and he's checked off the puck and falls down. And it's taken over by the Packers, shot in by the man who broke up the play. It's Dalby who chases the puck behind the net, but Frisk is there to clear to center. Now a pass to the left, Vidalic moving in. Hooks it at the net, Lozinski blocks and smothers, and they'll face off in the circle to his right. 2-11, gone in the second period. The score is tied at the goal apiece. Well, it's up and down, up and down. And it's the important thing with these rushes now, uh, this, this particular game, West and South St. Paul, they're not getting caught in any type of a numerical disadvantage. They're not getting three guys caught. They're playing you know, pretty sound uh, numerical hockey. Good position hockey, still with that same good enthusiasm. Dolby will face off against Rolfus. Al, Rob Lear and Ed Carroll has, has sent up some of the comments from the players. They're complaining about slow ice. We've got a warm day and a full house, and they say the ice is really, really slow. A puck is cleared to center by Edina West. Now Plum rink wides a pass to the right. It's stolen away, and here's Chapman moving in. Right circle, blasts away, and it goes off. And to Walker and back against the boards to the right of the goal. Here to the fire boards. Now centered out in front. It came off Plum's stick. It's in the slot area. Here's Oliver driving a shot. That hit a defender. Puck is flipped up high and out of play. And there's a break in the action with the score tied. Edina West won, South St. Paul won. We're ready, 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 we Chance for Oliver, forced off wide to the right, tried to center it, but it's broken up by Zwig. Oliver again in the corner to the left, feeds the point. Held in by Rizout. Now it is broken up, and 
We have a whistle. We'll have a, a face off as the puck deflected up over the glass. And the face off will come outside the blue line. Boy, Al, the players say it's slow ice. I think they're moving pretty good. Just think if we yeah. were down there skating, how slow that ice would that be. That would be slow <laughs> ice. <laughs> Yeah, and then they really know what slow ice is. <laughs> You're watching a game in slow motion. Yeah. From the faceoff, Ferguson getting the puck at his own blue line, fighting it rink wide, Spear. And now it's cleared back out to center ice. Dead in on the right side, Spear coming back in the corner for it. The Packer man falls. It's brought out to the right of the goal. A centering attempt hit the side of the net by Housley. Back to the blue line to Zwig. High pass is batted down. Larry Housley in the slot puts it in the left corner. It's centered out again, and it's intercepted. Mailey can't get out with it. Larry Housley now. Sebasti on the far side, leaving it. The drive is blocked. And here come the West St. West Edina Cougars. It's centered out to DeVoe. It's shot, and he shot it wide to the left. Back in the left corner. Cougars trying to keep the pressure on. Now DeVoe puts it in the slot area. It's intercepted. Cleared to the right side by Sobaski. Zwig is after it. Zwig back to the right of his goal, clearing it around on the right wing side, and South St. Paul starting out. Tuck is fed to O'Brien and over the line. And his shot blocked by Ferguson. They keep it in the zone. Larry Housley grabbed there. There will be a penalty, delayed penalty to Edina West. And we'll have a whole Penalty assessed at 4.15. Yeah, he got a pretty good piece of Al DeVoe. had an excellent scoring opportunity just before that penalty. Missed the net. Got a little too anxious, I think, but it was set up very well. He had the right idea. Face off to the right of Losinski. Well, let's see if that South St. Paul power play can work as effectively as it did the last time. That yeah, didn't take a long last time, did it, Bob? That was 11 seconds. 11 seconds. From the face off, the puck cleared by Rizut to center, and now Phil Housley has it. Worked it by one man, puts it in over the line, but it's offside. And they'll take a face off back outside the Edina West blue line. Score five, one all. Ed Housley has the quick hands, Al, Bob, quick hands. It's something you look for in a good athlete, the quick hands. He's got it. Uh, you can't coach it. It's hard to improve upon, but he's got those quick this hands. Styles backhand shot blocked, and the puck on the right side, and it's cleared. Down the ice by Rizout. And the Walker setting it up. Now a pass to the left side for Phil Housley. Headman's Dalzell in over the line, tried to feed Styles, but it's blocked, and again, Rizout plays it off the glass. Phil Housley back to pick it up inside his blue line. Headman's up the left side for Dalzell. Dalzell dropping to Housley. Housley swings to his right. He ran into O'Connor, knocking him over. Now Housley sidesteps another check, brings it in over the line, pass to the left, Styles back in front to Housley. He's got all those interesting saves at the left side. Housley after it again, it's loose in front. Scramble for the puck. Chance for Gallus. It's cleared away to the left side. And in the corner, Gallus putting it out in front. Dalzell is shot. And that deflects up off the stick of Fritz. Now a centering pass again. On the near side is fed by Dalzell. Back to the point. Housley sidestep one man. Tried to put it in front. It was blocked by Rizout. Housley getting it again at the left point. His shot blocked again by Rizout and clears it down the ice. 35 seconds left in the penalty on DZ. Plum going back for the puck behind his net. Plum out to the left. A long pass to center. Comes off a skate. Back to the right of the Edina West goal. Digging after it is O'Brien along the near boards. Almost overskated it. Has it now. O'Brien forced back to the goal and lost the puck when Spear knocked it off his stick. And Spear clears it past Bill Housley down the ice. Ten seconds left in the penalty. Twig is back for the puck. Plays it up the left wing side. Phil Housley has it there, dumping it to the blue line. It's intercepted. And Edina West takes over at center with Walters firing it back into the South St. Paul zone. A season comes on, and the Cougars have killed off the penalty. Phil Housley does Wig to the right of his goal. Wig, a bank shot off the boards, comes out to center. And now Chapman has it for Edina West. Tried to slip a pass through to Rolfus. It was blocked, and it's cleared back to the Edina West blue line. 
Ferguson rink wide now and it's shot into the South St. Paul zone by Rolfus Oliver in the corner to the right of the goal and players crashing into the goal and again for about the third time in the game yeah. it is lifted off the anchoring post and this time it was a collision between two South St. Paul players the goaltender Van de Walker was crashed by one of his own men coming back to help cover on the play it was uh, Larry Housley I believe and they both wound up in the net well there's a break in the action with the score tied 1-1 During Ford's 10% cash assistance program, buy a brand new Fiesta as low as $49.44. Choose from 100 in stock at Jerry Palmer Southdale Ford on 484 in Bloomington. Well, I tell you, those hats, those good cow look, good looking cowboy hats, and those young men on the South St. Paul bench, I tell you, it's down like in Fort Worth in Dallas. <laughs> Pretty snappy looking. State troopers are there. Yeah. Tell these goalies have been getting banged around today. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nobody said it was easy. <laughs> oh. Way underway in the South St. Paul Packers zone. The puck picked up on the left side by Bedelli. who's at center now. In over the line. Slid a pass to the right. It was too far for Dolby. And Maley puts it out to center ice. Back. Comes easy in over the line, stopping, tried to shoot. He was bumped and taken off the puck by Zwig. It's cleared out to center ice. And now Ferguson fires it back in as Badalic checks him. On the far side, Mikatowski tried to clear it out. Now Spear picking it up. Cross on the right side for DeVoe. DeVoe to Maley. Maley putting it in front. Backhand shot, and the save is made. A great save on the chance by DZ. Now back to the left point. Spear across to Ferguson. Ferguson is checked. The puck is cleared out. And coming back forward is Ferguson in his own zone across the Spear. Now out to DeVoe. A slip, quick pass to the left. And it's cleared back from the blue line to center right. Bauer clearing it away. And it's shot back in by the Edina West Cougars. Now Dolly slipping a pass out to center. It's tipped ahead by Dolby into the Edina West zone. And cleared out by Rizout. Now Badali uh, sliding it to the right in the corner beside the net a centering pass and a shot hit the track of the loose and the crease is cleared back to the line here's Plum firing and that hit a defender it comes out off Olsen and here's O'Connor into the left circle going right in and the shot is turned aside and again the goaltender is hit by Olsen Olsen crashed right into the net finder and it looked rather deliberate went right after the netminder Van de Walker driving him back into the goal they lifted it off the post again and I would have to say Olsen did that deliberately I have to agree with you Al it's, it's, that's certainly not necessary I don't know what they're trying to accomplish by that but, uh, yeah, he came out of right field he drilled him here it is from upstairs and watch this this is O'Connor coming down on the breakaway and Van der Walker makes a magnificent saves playing a super game. Now watch this. No doubt about it. it he just stays up. after him right under his neck. Stick was up. It had to be a cross check. Well, Olsen made the initial contact. Then he was pushed further into the goalie by number 11. But he made the initial. He stayed in there pretty good. He hit him first and then was pushed in second. Well, well, check and twice. It's a double minor. Double minor. Wow. And we also have a minor on Sobaski. Wow. Sobaski getting a single minor. The time of the penalties is 8.22. Following penalties have been assessed. On the guy was number 15, Wes Olson. Fortunate major for cross-checking the goaltender. On the sixth day calls, number 16, Sebasti, two minute minor for nothing. Sebasti goes to the run. A single minor. And also a double minor for the cross checking infraction. Dave Sebasti and the Packers minor major. Four minute major for cross checking. A little four on four action here. Opens up this ice a little bit. Shows some of the real athletic skills that some of these people have. 
Both teams shorthanded, but when Sebastian returns, South St. Paul will have a man advantage. The Packers moving inside the line now, broken up and cleared to center. O'Connor is after it, but the Packers keep possession, and now Larry Housley picking up a pass from O'Brien. Back at center right, across the Dino West line. Larry Housley into the left corner, tried to put it in front, tipped in behind the net, brought out the right side, bank pass off the boards, comes out to center, Flum banking it off the wall. And now it's picked up by O'Brien. O'Brien back for the Packers, in over the blue line, feeding it to the left. A return pass, knocked back in behind the net. As Housley tried to get it out in front. And now back comes Frisk. Frisk is tied up by Larry Housley. Lost the puck, and Larry Housley banks it out off the boards to center. And broken up in the neutral zone. A long pass, and it's offside. As Walters, that long pass inside the South St. Paul blue line, but they're bringing it back for a face-off outside the Edina West line. We have 103 remaining in Sobaski's penalty, and then South St. Paul will go on the power play. Yeah, Ralph has had a good ID. He stuck in behind, and he was almost gone. And here's a little predicament. Dougie Wood's got to get some of his key people off for a short rest to come back for that power play. And he doesn't want to get burnt on this four and four situation either. This is Rolfus again putting it out in front, meant for Chapman, but it's intercepted in the slot. And so St. Paul starting back, but it's again broken up in the neutral zone by Rolfus. Rolfus to Ferguson. Now a pass out on the far side got by Chapman, who chases it. Mikatowski checked him, bringing him down. There's going to be a penalty, and the puck is brought back to the net to safety by Dalby. Or Dalzell, and now the penalty this is hurts. called on Mikatowski. This hurts South St. Paul. Mikatowski, the man got in behind him. He... So South St. Paul will be two men short for 34 seconds, and then they get Sobaski back, and then both these will be shorthanded for a couple of minutes. Tripping on Sobaski. Or on, uh... Here it comes. Right yeah, there. He got him. Yeah. Mikatowski for tripping. Yep. Give credit to that Dinah West player for forcing that, too. He had every reason to just dump the puck and maybe get a change, but he was going for it. Face off to the right of the South St. Paul goal, and it's cleared to center ice. Ferguson backing to his blue line. Feeds the pass to the left. Now Spear back on the right. It's steered into the South St. Paul zone. Clearing attempt held in by DeVoe. Knocked down the line by Ferguson. Feeds the left point, but it comes out to center. Spear picking it up, turning back at center. Returns it to Ferguson on the right. Back across on the left now. DZ having trouble with it. It got away from him until Housley brings it out. Uh, now Housley turning back. Sobaski's ready to come on. He steps on, and both teams are a man short. Now the puck is shot down the ice into the Edina West zone, and we have an icing call against South St. Paul. There's a break in the action. The score is South St. Paul 1, Edina West 1. Kmart is having a sale on Color Match Acrylic Yarn, 12 colors that always match. Super size 8 ounce skeins are just $1.66 each through Saturday, March 14th at Kmart. 4.31 remaining in the second period. Both teams shorthanded. Well, that penalty on Mitzikowski hurt South St. Paul. They could have gone up there for a while, but it was a penalty made out of some hard work, so you can't really fault him too much. Styles with the puck to Dalzell, broken up in the Dino West zone, and it's cleared back out to center ice. Now, DC lost it, and Phil Housley starting back. Phil Housley across the Dino line. Take the shot, now fires and goes wide to the right. Styles after it on the far side, beats the point. Held in by Dalzell, and his shot hit Spear, went wide, and winds up back to the right of the goal. Stiles has it there, puts it out in front, and it's picked up. It was meant for Dalzell, but Beasley slides it to the right for Dubow. Across the South St. Paul line into the left corner, forced back of the net by Phil Housley, puts it in front. The puck sitting loose, and Van de Walker comes out to clear it to the left corner, Dubow chasing it. Now it's picked up. By the South St. Paul Packers, Phil Housley feeding it to center. Styles shooting it in, then wheeling to the bench and a line change. Both teams still short-handed. One man short, Ferguson putting it out to center. This is O'Connor. Left circle, fires wide to the right. 
So Baski on the far side, clearing the center. Ferguson picking it up now. Head Manning O'Connor danced by one check from Plum to the left. Briska shot, and he hit the glass with that one. Oh, and now right. South St. Paul has the man advantage. Back on the ice is Mikatowski. Larry Housley with the puck in his own zone, feeding to the right and getting it back. 20 seconds in the penalty on Edina West. This is Larry Housley firing, and he shot that wide. On the far side, Schuler holding it in. Pell poked it ahead. Here's Sobaski in the left circle, trying to come in front, jumped it in front, but there was a whistle. And playing the puck with the hand, Al. A hand pass being called, and we'll take a face-off. 2.47 remaining, and there's a break in the action with the score tied 1-1. Next time you take a break for refreshment, reach for Kemp's Ice Cream. Thick, rich, heavy-bodied, creamy smooth. Serve a winner. Kemp's Ice Cream. Olsen about ready to return. Nine seconds left in his penalty. 2.47 remaining in the period. Hand pass against South St. Paul. Puts the face off outside the Dinah West blue line. Now the puck is cleared down the ice by Razuk. Winding up to the right of the goal. In the corner, Rolfus is checked. Yeah, he gets it yeah, back to the point. Line. Razut fires off to the left of the goal. In behind the net, Mikatowski. Up the left side, held in by Razut. And both teams back at full strength now behind the net. Zwig. Zwig clearing it to the right. In pursuit of the puck along with Chapman. Chapman skated him off. They hold it in the zone. Larry Housley back to pick it up in the right corner. Firing it around behind to the left side for O'Brien. O'Brien loses it to Oliver. Oliver after it fell to his knees and traps the puck along the boards. That stops play, and they'll face it off to the left of Vanderwalker. I think the tempo is just light just a little bit now. These players are showing a little fatigue. It's been a physical game, up and down. A little warm in the building tonight. Very hot. Ice might be a little slow. Don't get caught out too long, both Edina and South St. Paul. They've got to use their heads now. They've got to play all the conditions inside the building. Rolfus will face it off with Dolby to the left of Vanderwalker. Make that uh, Phil Hausman taking the draw. Plum from behind the net, around to the right side. It's cleared on out to center ice, and the Packers on the attack. Shot into the zone. And flying on the play goes Bauer after unloading it, driving it in. On the right side, it's picked up, and Rolfus comes back for Edina West. Taps it to the blue line. It's in the Edina West zone now. Oliver couldn't get possession. It's cleared to the boards on the left. Vidalic trying to get it out. It's at the blue line. A long shot by Rolfus. Blocked on a short hop. It's loose. It's back to the point. Here's a shot by Rizud. That hits the traffic. Goes to the right corner. Chapman has it. He skated off. And it's cleared around behind by Flum. Rizud at the right point. Beating it to the left. Rolfus shot hit the traffic and Bill Housley comes to center. Bill Housley plays it in over the Indiana West blue line. He was checked on the play by Rizud. And now it's brought out. Here's a chance for Edina West. Into the left circle, a centering pass. Goes rink wide. And that pass by Claver. We got a hook of a penalty being called. Hook at South St. Paul. And 18.57 will be the time of the penalty. 15, South St. Paul, minor. And that penalty being taken by Pete Bauer, a minor for hooking. Oh, it's a physical, that physical game down there. Here's where he gets him. He follows him in the corner. And he got a good piece of him. Bauer for hooking at 13.57. So, as Herbie said so often today, the final minute of the period and they give up a penalty like that is just crucial. Yeah, I'm sure Dougie Wolf's not too happy with that. One minute remaining in the period. Cleared around One behind minute. the net by Mikatowski. The Cougars trying to hold it in. We're in the last minute of the period, but now Zwick clears it three wide and down the ice. 50 seconds left in the second period. Game tied, one all. O'Brien taken in hard along the boards behind the net. Puck is brought out by Spear on the right side. Over the South St. Paul blue line. Drops a pass back and it's held into the zone. Here is a chance for Maley in the corner. Now Maley left the puck and it's cleared back to the line high. It got by Ferguson. 
And he'll have to come back for it into the Dyna West zone with 20 seconds remaining. Ferguson, pass out off the left wing boards, got by DeVoe. Zwig in the South St. Paul zone, clearing it the length of the ice, a shot right on the net. An easy save by Lozinski, back of the net. O'Brien took a man out, and now Spear leaves it. It's fed out to center by Mailey. DeVoe didn't see it, and there's the horn to end the second period. With the score tied, the South St. Paul Packers won, and the Edina West Cougars won. Interesting hockey game. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see Edina West coming back on that power play. South St. Paul had that advantage coming back into the second period, and they tied the game on it, and we'll have to see how Edina there's West does on the third. The yeah, it didn't take South St. Paul long to tie it. 11 seconds, Bob. Let's go right down to Rob Lear. Person and coach of Edina West, and you were saying this has been quite a battle. Yeah, sure is. We're, we're trying, but we're having a little difficulty doing some of the things we're trying to do, and uh, San, uh, South St. Paul sure has a lot to do with that, but we're hoping to put things together for a good third period. We've heard so much about your club's team speed, but then we've heard from players that have played on this ice surface earlier, things are slowed down, the building is warm. Do you feel it's taken away from your game? Oh, I don't know. It just, I think it's, it's tough to get going out here, and then I think you get to a certain point where the emotion starts taking over, and I think that's what we have to depend on now. Uh, when the, you know, the old saying, when the going gets tough, then the tough have to get going. And I think that's the thing that we're going to have to do the third period. As a newcomer, has your club responded the way you'd like them to? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's always new being here, but I don't feel there's any different than what we had last week. Thanks, Bart. Yeah. Bart Larson, head coach of Edina West. Bob? Well, that's the end of the second period. We're tied again. It's one for Edina West and South St. Paul one. This is the 1981 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Electricity, think of the ways it protects and improves our health. From a simple home vaporizer that makes a cold more comfortable to a complex life support system in a modern hospital. Electricity, it's a valuable force that makes our lives a little easier, more comfortable, and more productive. Gas lines may be gone, but high gas prices aren't. That's why Montgomery Ward created the Gas Miser Radio, Ward's finest steel-belted radio, with tested fuel savings over a major manufacturer's non-radial tire of 8 to 10 percent. Now save 68 to $120 on sets of four. Ward's radial-tuned Easy Street shock absorbers are just $8.97 each. You can save $20 on a set of four. Montgomery Ward, showing you ways to save gas and money used to have trouble sleeping on those hard mattresses he toss and turn then we got our waterbed gallery waterbed it gives you complete even support and it's very good for your back now horace sleeps like a baby a waterbed gallery waterbed is so warm and cozy and what do the neighbors think well we're not losing any sleep over it <laughs> The word is out. Price is why Saxon Ford is the Northland's number one volume Ford dealer. All over the Twin Cities, people are coming to Saxon Ford because you can't buy a car cheaper. Saxon Ford sales are soaring, and now with factory rebates, Saxon is less than cheaper. Order your factory rebate until March 21st. Saxon Ford, two blocks west of the Capitol on University Avenue and Marion Street. We're blowing the socks off the competition. We're back live at the Civic Center, and Herbie, here we go again with a tight, 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 tight game. <laughs> Quit talking to the fans, Herbie. As Gus Hendrickson said, I'd do anything for a dollar. <laughs> he, he got me a raise. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's South St. Paul opening up Dave Sebasti real quick, 11 seconds into the period. They tie him one-to-one. -one. Yeah, Plum made a good shot from the, from the point. Low on that. Here he goes, Sebasti. Sebasti's holding his ground in there. Good tip. Bang. There it is. 11 seconds. The new ball game right now. Herbie, in this period, South St. Paul had a, had a big, big chance when Olsen got that major penalty. Then they came back and gave up another penalty. And to top that off, they gave up a penalty in the final minute of play in, in the second period. It, it's going to be awful tough for them coming back now. Yeah, South St. Paul, well, they took three penalties. Uh, what's they call it? Two. South St. Paul is going to have to pick their spots this third period. They don't want to get penalty trouble now in the last, you know, last period of tight ball game. Of course, they've got to kill off that first power play by yeah. Dinah West. That's right. 
Well, they, at the end of two periods of play, we're all tied up. It's an even hockey game. You dine at West 1, South St. Paul 1. The exciting action of the 1981 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament will continue after station identification. How much delicious roast beef can you eat? Arby's gives you a choice. When you want to eat light, there's Arby's new special size. For bigger appetites, try our famous regular roast beef. And when you're really hungry, nothing satisfies like Arby's new king size. So remember, on one hand, you can choose the lighter Arby's special. On the other hand, the Arby's regular. And on the third hand, the Arby's king size. On the third hand... The special weekend sale is now in full swing at Wally McCarthy's Lindahl Olds. Over 700 new and used cars specially priced to sell. A 1980 Olds Cutlass Calais, Lindahl's price, $85.75. A 74 Cadillac Sedan Seville, $18.88. A 79 Chevrolet Monza Sport Coupe, $42.88. A 79 Buick Skylark Coupe, $29.95. Come out and be a part of one of the greatest automobile sales ever at Wally McCarthy's Lindahl Olds. Last year, crime victim centers helped out more than 5,000 victims of crime. But at the same time, there were some 62,000 cases of assault, robbery, burglary, vandalism, and fraud reported in the Twin Cities. You know, it's a crime more people don't know about us. Crime victim centers offer free 24-hour assistance to victims of crime. Call us. Crime victim centers. If it happens to you... KSTP TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Channel 5. We now return to the St. Paul Civic Center Arena and the 1981 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Got a brief glimpse there of the sellout crowd. We had a sellout crowd earlier today, another one tonight. I'm sure we'll have two tomorrow as we have more high school hockey action for you as we go all the way through the championship game Saturday night. But right now, we want to find out more about Edina West, the first time ever for their hockey team in this tournament. But let's find out more about the school itself. About 100 years ago, along the banks of Minnehaha Creek, a flour mill called Edina Mill served the nearby Indians and settlers. Most traces of that early era are gone now, but the mill pond still exists. And nearby, a stately pioneer home still stands. Today, Edina is known as a comfortable residential area of 49,000 with a variety of homes and apartment areas. Conveniently located to the Twin Cities and surrounding areas, it hosts a variety of businesses, industries, and shopping areas. The quality of life is enhanced by churches of every denomination and the Fairview Southdale Hospital. With one of the lowest tax rates in the area, Edina has developed an extensive park and recreational program highlighted by the Braemar Park Golf Course and Ice Center. The Edina West Campus is located on a hill overlooking a creek valley and the Crosstown Highway. 1,300 students in grades 10 through 12 attend classes in one of the two interconnected buildings. Edina West will become Edina High School when the two schools, Edina East and Edina West, merge in the fall of 1981. The slopes, track, tennis courts, and athletic fields surrounding the campus are used for a variety of seasonal activities. The Edina schools have had a history of student achievers in academic programs and athletic teams. Although only nine years old, Edina West has had 80 students chosen as merit scholars and the National Council of Teachers of English have presented over 10 students with a certificate of achievement and awards in writing. During these past nine years, the Edina West Trophy case has shown evidence of the accomplishments of athletic, artistic, and debate competition. In just the last two and a half years, students added the state championship trophies in boys slalom skiing, debate, girls gymnastics, the state AA football title, boys tennis, and boys cross-country skiing. Edina West has a strong musical program and each year presents outstanding vocal musical productions and instrumental pop concerts. A great number of educational opportunities are open to Edina West students. 
The variety of required and elective courses available to all is helpful in fulfilling the special interest needs of individual students. A highly trained and dedicated staff provides leadership for more than 175 curricular offerings in required academic courses and elective career-oriented programs. These range from Latin and humanities to computer science and vocational courses. Each year, many Edina West graduates qualify for advanced college placement in American history, foreign language, mathematics, and English. The community of Edina has supported an outstanding educational program. Parents of Edina West students continue this support through Parents Club, Athletic, and Music Booster organizations, a community resource speaker pool, and by assisting in a variety of services helpful to students, as in the Career Information Center. To keep informed on school affairs, groups of parents are invited to a series of breakfasts held in the school. An active parent advisory group meets regularly with the principal. Symbolizing Edina West is the cougar beside the shield showing academic excellence, friendship, and personal development in both the arts and athletics. The word pride stands not only for a group of cougars and the cougar mascot, but also the spirit of Edina West. That's Edina West High School. Don't forget, right after this game, Irondale versus Roseau. But right now, let's check in downstairs with Ed Carroll. Ed? All right, Bob, and what you're seeing right here is a special display presented by Sports Illustrated to the United States Hockey Hall of Fame in Eveleth, Minnesota. And with me now in this intermission is Roger Godin, who is executive director there. Roger, I guess uh, the Americans' gold medal win has done a lot for the Hockey Hall of Fame in Evelyn. Well, it certainly has, Ed. We uh, doubled our attendance uh, in the summer period over 1979 from about uh, 6,500 people to over 12,000, uh, very uh, largely uh, to uh, the fact that the team wanted Lake Placid. Uh, we were also fortunate in getting some help from the state of Minnesota to uh, promote the place. Uh, and the two worked together very well, uh, along with the fact I think people stayed closer to home last summer. That's a very nice, tasteful facility there. I uh, would urge everyone to go, really. A uh, very nice place to be. Uh, tell me, uh, quickly, we've got some college uh, awards coming up. One of them in particular is the Hobie Baker, and you're very interested in that. Well, we certainly are. Uh, the people out of the decathlon club, uh, Murray Williamson and uh, Chuck Bart and so forth, have really done a great job on that thing. And, uh, They've done their homework, and they're certainly going to have an award equivalent to the Heisman Trophy. And it's uh, it's rewarding that um, of the finalists, seven of ten are from the United States, which shows the development of hockey in our country. And uh, you know, it's exciting to realize uh, that that fact. Uh, the uh, Baker, of course, is an enshrinee of our yeah. Hall of Fame and uh, one of the really great American players, perhaps the greatest ever produced in the U.S. And of course, the Hobie Baker Award goes to the outstanding college hockey player in the country, Roger Godin of the Hall of Fame. Thank you for being with us. Let's go back to Bob. Thanks a lot, Ed. We'll be back with the start of the third period in just a moment. The score is Edina West 1, South St. Paul 1. This is the 1981 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Pre-season sale of chain link fence fabric. Get 50% off when you buy a complete line of fence from Sears. They say you Ford guys are really after that sales championship. We're ready. Have you seen our cars and trucks? Fantastic. We've got big sales incentive programs from Ford that could save you big bucks. We're ready. What about financing? We're ready with the best possible rate. Right now. We're ready. Well, you better get out there and do it. We're ready. Those Ford guys, they're ready right now. Better see your Northland Ford dealer today. War Road, Minnesota, it's Hockey Town, USA, the home of famous Christian Brothers hockey sticks. Here, expert Christian Brothers craftsmen use the finest materials to create hockey sticks of unparalleled quality. They're favorites of everyone from squirts to the pros of the National Hockey League. Hockey sticks that do the job with accuracy and dependability. That's the Christian Brothers trademark. When you visit your pro or sport shop, pick the stick from Hockey Town, USA. Christian Brothers, the tradition of greatness. It's happy days again, and the fun's just starting. Give me five. Putting your pocket in 
Relive the funniest moments from those fabulous 50s with a few surprises. Go suck an egg. The whole gang's on hand and headed your way. E See them for Happy Days Again. Join Fonzie, Richie, and the whole gang every weekday at 4.30 p.m. here on KSTP-TV, Channel 5. Two radio television broadcasting scholarships to attend Brown Institute Minneapolis will be awarded again this year. Applications may be obtained from this station, your high school career counselor, or the Upper Midwest Communications Conclave, Box 6113, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55406. Back live at the Civic Center, Bob Bruce along with Al Shaver and Herb Brooks with a very important announcement, Herb. Yes, Bob, thank you. Uh, there's a young hockey player out in the New Hope area by the name of Kevin Daly that suffered just a tragic accident in a game. Right now he is, is paralyzed, and I'd just like to call the attention to the hockey fans and see if we all can't give this young man a little boost. There's a benefit night for him, March 28th in the New Hope Arena from 7 to 10 o'clock. If people can get out there, that would help defray some of those huge medical expenses. And if you can't get there, there's a Kevin Daly benefit fund set up in his name, obviously, at the New Hope State Bank. And for all the people, you know, watching, it's American tradition to give and think of other people. And let's see if we can do something for this young man. I'll second that, Herbie. Very uh, deserving cause. Let's pitch in and help young Kevin. Kevin Daly, benefit fund, New Hope State Bank. It'll get there. 57 seconds remaining in the and Al, if, if young Kevin is watching, you know, the hockey community is a very close and sincere community, and we all wish him the very best. Okay, puck shot into the Dyna West zone. The Cougars on the power play. Puck picked up along the far boards, back to the point. A long shot by Plum, changed direction. It goes off the glove of Glosinski into the left corner and Spear has it. Spear clearing it ahead, but not out. It's driven back into the zone. And now cleared to the left side. Picked off at the blue line. Bill Housley firing. That hit the traffic in front of the net. It's cleared away to the left side for Chris. In over the blue line, left to drop pass, and it's broken up and cleared out to center ice. And all the way back into the Edina West zone. Taking a hard right along the boards there is O'Brien, but he keeps chasing that puck to the right side. Now it comes loose, and Edina West gets possession, a rink wide pass off the boards for Chris. And now South St. Paul is back at full strength. Chris' shot hit the right side of the goal. Puck is cleared high and picked up at the blue line now. And here's Styles across the Dino West line, chasing the puck to the left corner. Got spun around by Claver, falls, drops it back and shot. And Lozinski made the save on that sizzling shot from Sobaski. Make that Gorman and let that go. From the point, it's held in. Styles in the left corner after the puck by the center at the stand on it. And the Cougars. Trying to clear now, but South St. Paul keeping the heat on from the point. A shot by Mikatowski. Deflects rink wide. It's cleared out to center ice. And the Packers take over with Mikatowski picking it up on the right side, shooting it in. It's batted down and cleared by Claver. Styles trying to get control. Now Mikatowski firing it in. Rink wide to the right. Razut coming back for it. Razut behind the net. Takes off a check there from Dalzell. And now they play moves up to center on the right side. At the blue line, it's broken up, and now Claver has the puck at center. Claver to his right, it's shot in by Rizout. It's off Vanda Walker's glove into the right corner. Cleared ahead to the line, but it is held in by the Cougars. Now on the near side, fed ahead by Chapman. A backhand shot is right on, and it's cleared down the ice by Dalzell as it rebounded off Vanda Walker. Coming back for Claver, head manning up the left side for Chapman. Chapman moving into the neutral zone now. In over the line, comes the right circle, fires. Vanda Walker blocked that, and the loose puck is cleared away to the boards on the right. Still in the zone, now it's knocked in behind the net. Zwig picking it up, moving up to left, a long pass up the middle. It's picked up, Dolby in over the line, firing, and it winds up going wide to the left corner. 
Like they're starting to open up a little bit here in this third period with the score tied one all. Spear, Rick Wise pass to the right for Ferguson. Now Ferguson drives a long shot. Van de Walker blocks it and sweeps it away to his right. High score, one all. And Chapman stealing the puck. Going to the backhand side. Stopping, turned to the forehand, slipped and fell and lost the puck. And back come the South St. Paul Packers with the dolly. The Dalich plays it in over the line. Larry Housley to the left of the goal. Coming in front of his shot, he hit the left post on the outside. Tuck back at Phil Housley. Plays it back around behind the net. Ferguson comes to the left, and he takes a hard hit there from the Dalich. The puck is cleared to the right side. And West St. West. Edina shooting it in. Cleared around behind to the right side for Sobaski. And his long pass going all the way down the ice. Here back court, we have uh, icing call. Right. There's a break in the action. The score is tied. South St. Paul 1, Edina West 1. You get more number one stereo music on the Twin Cities' most listened to music station, <laughs> KS95 <laughs> FM. Well, that's the start of this period. This is featured by some excellent play. I think it has a lot to do with the texture of the ice. The ice is pretty good right now. It'll start maybe getting in a, in a questionable state uh, maybe halfway through. It slows down the play, but they're moving right now. They off to the right of the South St. Paul goal. The puck came back to Frisk, and he got it off the heel of the stick. It went in the left corner. Now on the right side, it's cleared to center ice. Shot in by O'Brien and picked up back of the net. Rizout clearing it around on the right side, and the puck goes out of play, and we will have a face-off in the Edina West zone. 10.53 remaining to settle it. In regulation time, it's tied at 1-1. Herbie, you know, your teams were so well-known for being well-conditioned. You think that maybe in another couple of minutes it's going to be the conditioning. Which team's in the best condition that might win this game? Oh, that's got a lot to do with it. A lot of teams start out, and they're, and they're, the way they can execute all their technical abilities, they start out at high pitch, and then they drop. It's who can execute as fast and maintain that tempo is so important. Frisk after the puck got a shot out there. Oh, and it just goes wide to the left. Frisk trying to bring it out in front and lost the puck. And now he got flattened on a hit from Styles. Frisk is slow getting up. Puck back out at center ice. Sobaski lost it. Stolen away by O'Connor who drops it back in his own. It's fed to the left side now. Claver mishandled it at first. Plays it back to the side of the net. Here's a backhand shot. Sobaski in the spot. His stick and Chris comes out. Long pass is too far for Olsen. And Phil Housley plays it back into the Dino West zone and they call it for icing. Great oh, save by right. Lewinsky. Oh, did he hang tough in that one? Oh, I thought that one was a sure goal. And of course, you can't overlook the save by Vandewalker just a little bit earlier. But you know, I see something. I, I used to do this. I always had a stopwatch with me on the bench just to time these people periodically. There's Vandewalker. That's a good save also. He stayed with that puck. Almost. <laughs> Almost. And that guy supposedly had chicken pox? Yeah. Wow. Isn't that supposed to affect your eyesight? Now the puck comes right in front of the South St. Paul goal. It's in the circle to the right. Turning with it. Turning in nailing in the corner. Broken up there. They hold it in. It comes to the right side of the goal. And Vandewalker falls on it. 9.58 remaining. There's a break in the action with the score. Edina West 1, South St. Paul 1. The State High School Hockey Tournament is brought to you in part by Micron Skates and their fine dealers, Fitzharris, Athletic in St. Cloud, TG Sporting Goods in Thief River Falls. Well, I kept the stopwatch just on their time out on the ice so I didn't get too many guys tired just to uh, periodically check it or have my assistant do it or a trainer. I see Bobby O'Connor, the Adina West coach, doing the same. And I know the North Stars use that stopwatch for each player to keep track of their ice time also. Puck is in the Adina West zone, and here come the Cougars on the attack. The puck is poked into the South St. Paul zone, and it's cleared away by Phil Housley, picked up in the neutral zone now by Dalzell, and now it's broken up in the Adina into the rink. Phil Housley brings it in, but Dalzell is trapped in the offside. And the faceoff will come back outside the blue line. 9.15 left in regulation time. A short shift in them. 
Short shifts, short shifts, short shifts. Right now, keep everybody as fresh as you can. That Mr. Housley's got the great hands, Al. Wow. I'm telling you. I'm going to shoot pool a lot or something. <laughs> juggle or something. I never could figure that out. I always, I did the opposite, the opposite I guess. A nine on West. Firing it in. Swig back to the left of his goal. Flipping it to center ice. And back forward comes Rizut. Rizut chased by Bedalic. Back of the net. Now Bedalic checks him. He clears it to the line. And Mikatowski fanned on it. The puck coming out to center. It's played back in. Promptly cleared. Picked up and brought in by Dalby. Dalby shakes off a check from Flavor. But the loose puck is picked up and brought back of the net by Rizut. Up the right side now. Oliver overskates it. But Rizut following up carries on with the puck. At the South St. Paul line, he's forced wide to the left by Zwig. A centering pass is high and goes rink-wide. Flavor poking it back into the corner for Chapman. Chapman works his way by one man. Got a shot off. And the Walker makes the save and covers up. Tucks rebounded away from him, but he was able to get it. No! One of the Edina players appeared to take a kick at Van de Walker. I don't it understand what they're doing. Chapman. It looked like he... Did I uh, misinterpret that? I don't think you misinterpreted it. Lost his balance, did he? Okay. Uh -huh. I'll buy that. No, I tell you, they're, 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 they're trying to intimidate uh, Vanderwalker. There's no doubt about it. They're trying to muscle him around, and Vanderwalker is standing up to it. Okay, now here's where it'll happen after Chapman gets up off the bottom of the pile. Yeah, he lost his balance. Stuck that <laughs> foot out a little bit <laughs> as he was losing his balance, it looked like to me. But what do I know? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Bob. This has been an excellent hockey game by two fine teams, and two teams that are very well coached. Got right off the faceoff on the far side. O'Brien clears the line. Larry Housley goes right over the boards halfway into the South St. Paul bench as he ran into Ferguson. Now here comes Spadoli trying to slip the defense, but it's broken up and cleared away to the left. Played back of the net by Phil Housley. In behind the Dino West goal, centering attempt hit the back of the net. Now it's back of the goal. Sabaski feeding it back to the left point. Plum drives the shot. Blocked and covering up on it is Luzinski. It's a good thing he covered up on it, too. There's a break in the action with the score. South St. Paul 1, Edina West 1. We're ready, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. Those four guys are ready, right now. Face off to the right of Lozinski. Boy, these kids got great stamina, a lot of emotion. Whoa, look at him go over the boards. Yeah. Reminds me of a check I saw in the uh, Czechoslovakia game. Yeah, Remember coach, that one? I think that USA coach said some things to that check. I don't know what he said, but... <laughs> Stolen at the blue line by Frisk, held in. Sobaski failed to clear it. Olsen plays it to the left corner, goes after it, takes a hard hit from Plum, gets it back to the blue line, a shot by Spear, and it hit the traffic in the slot as it was blocked by Pedalic. Or Phil Housley, rather. Phil Housley back in. Tried to center, and his pass is blocked. And now O'Brien in the right corner falls along with Olsen, and we'll have a face-off to the right of Lozinski. Boy, they're shifting them. Fast now, Al and Bob, both teams. 7-12 in regulation time, tied at one. 20, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, new, new group coming out. So the U.S. coach said something to the Czechoslovakian player. Yeah. Al, next time we see Carl Malden, let's ask him what he said. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks pretty good Czech. On the face off, the Cougars try to come out with it. And they clear it to center. Zwick playing it back along the far boards. And the Cougars get possession. Broken up in the neutral zone. And now it's brought in and broken up by Claver. It's back out to center ice. Here's a chance for Edina West as the Cougars put it in behind the net. Yeah, and another collision. And I have never seen that goal come off the post so much. It's easy carrying in there. Crashed heavily into the post. He's getting up. He's all right. And we will have a face-off again in the South St. Paul zone with 6.49 remaining. There's a break in the action with the score. Edina West 1, South St. Paul 1. 
your Amico dealer has lead-free gasoline with 14 benefits. Higher octane Amico premium lead-free. Here's Beasy's crash into the post. Al, they, they've got a short pipe on this, which is really good because if that goal does not give way, then you're going to have some players getting hurt. Now, fortunately, it's giving way, and so that, that pressure is relieved. If not, then you can get hurt. We had uh, uh, a player from Hill Murray last year got injured pretty bad on the, on the goal. He got tangled up his wig there. That's how he lost his balance. Styles fails to get out. Now it's picked up and it's brought out to center ice for Dalzell at the blue line. He's taken out of the play. And a good defensive move by Razout. Passed over in the right, and it comes across the blue line. Behind the attacking player, Duvall, he's offside. Boy, Dinah West is really switching fast, and South St. Paul is following their lead. 6.30 remaining. How uh, about that, fellas? A yeah. little Packer. <laughs> That's all right. Packy. <laughs> the mother's not too bad either. <laughs> huh? I wonder what Patty will have to say I about that. I should say that. My wife's probably listening. <laughs> when you see the father, he's 10 feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> the Czechoslovakian. <laughs> Now they puck in the Dino West zone, and here come the Hornets with Rolfus at the blue line. It's broken up by Phil Housley, cleared back down the ice. And the Cougars come back with Ferguson. Ferguson now, round on the right side for Oliver. Popped his stick, he pokes at it, getting it out to center ice. Plum missed it. And here they come with Rolfus. Rolfus to the left of the goal, tried to put it in front of him, behind center up, and Oliver is shot in the save. Another shot by Oliver, hit a defenseman. Kept in the zone, and the pass to the far point by Spear goes to Stray, and Badalich gets it. He lost it. It slides back into the Dyna West zone. A clearing attempt hit Badalich. Badalich battling to get it back. A centering pass now by Dolby. It's held in the zone. Here's Badalich chasing it to the far board. Badalich back out to the right point position. Phil Housley guns the shot. Kicked out by Lozinski. In the left corner, here's a chance to bring it out in front of the centering pass was street wide. Bringing it out from the left side with Patton out is on now. It's going to be a penalty out. Looks like elbowing against Edina West. Time of the penalty will be 9.43. Penalty. Mike Spear. Called on Spear. Minor penalty on Edina West. Number four, Mike I'll tell you, Spear, yeah, five. everybody uh, says that Dyna is so fast. Spear, elbow, oh, that one hurt. Yeah, he got him good. And South St. Paul is so physical. Well, Dyna is just as physical. And South St. Paul is just as fast. It's been a good game. You're right. Oh, very yeah. even. Very even. They all have today. I can't This is just incredible, these three the games. Now it's back to the left point. Swig's pass is tipped out to center ice. Phil Housley coming back for it. He's back across in the left for Swig at center. Across the Dino West line. Puts it in Sebastian relays. A shot by O'Brien is blocked. Now Phil Housley moving in. A shot and he's taken away from him. Lozinski hugging the left post. Phil Housley again back near the blue line with it. Stop deep in the slot. Puts it across the left. Larry Housley a shot. No, oh, kicked out by Lozinski. The puck to the right of the goal. Sebastian tried to center. Now it's in the left corner. Comes back along the near boards to Phil Housley at the point. Gives it to Larry Housley. He's blocked by Claver, and Claver clears the puck to center right. 115 in the penalty. Phil Housley getting it back now from Zwick. Phil Housley in over the blue line. Beats it across to Sebastian. Tried to put it in front for Phil Housley, but it's cleared away to the right side. Now it's back to the blue line to Zwick. He cranks up and drills the shot and hits the glass. Picked up behind the net by O'Brien, but he loses it. And it's cleared down the ice by Razout. Head out to center ice by the goaltender, Vanda Walker, played into the Edina West zone. And down on the play goes Claver as he missed with his check. <laughs> now a hard hit in the corner. Sobaski back to the right of the goal, trying to work it in front. It's cleared away for Larry Housley. Out to Phil Housley. Back to the right circle. Here's a chance right in front of shot to save a scramble. A loose puck, and Lewinsky has it. Great save by Lo Lewinsky. Great save by Lozinski. Held his ground. 
could you ask for any better hockey action? Oh, of course. Absolutely fantastic. Right, there's a break in the action. The score is tied. He died at West 1, South St. Paul 1. Keep up with minute-by-minute -minute changes in weather on static-free KS95 FM, the Twin Cities' most listened to music station. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. Channel 5, KSTP-TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis. Bill Housley holding in a clearing attempt at the line. Now it's fed to the left point. Plum a shot. He's wide to the right. Lozinski tapped it in behind, and it is in the mesh. It is eventually knocked into the net, but the whistle had sounded. Uh, 13 seconds remaining in the penalty on Spear, and they're calling a face-off back outside the blue line. Well, they may not get a goal on this power play, but they certainly had a good one. They moved the puck around. They've gotten a lot of shots on goal. It's just that uh, Lozinski's played excellent. Yes, that's, that's for sure. And I tell you, the Adina penalty killers are positionally very good. Now they puck a shot in by Phil Housley. Back into the right corner for it. Dalzell back of the net. He's tied up by Ferguson. Yeah, Ferguson well, comes well, away with right. the puck to the right. Spear is on. And the Cougars are at full strength. The pass comes into the South St. Paul zone. And Phil Housley clears it. Now Housley picking up a loose puck at his blue line. Over the Dinah West line. He's taken out. Knocked down by Spear, who also falls. Puck in the left corner. And the Cougars get possession, trying to come out with it. It's knocked back in off the stick of Melly. Now it's brought back in. On the near side, it's Dalzell firing. And that shot goes up out of play as he was checked by Ferguson. And we'll have a face-off to the left of Lozinski. And Phil Housley tried one of those little park, park board plays, pulling between his feet. Boy, did he get thrilled. Right Doug Spear really hit him. Good pitcher, Dougie Wu. Could we have our third straight overtime game? Wow. Very easy. I'm just afraid if this one goes into overtime, it's going to last a lot longer than a few seconds. <laughs> From the faceoff, it's back to the right point. Mikatowski shot, hit the traffic in the slot and goes to the right side to Oliver. Oliver clears to the line and it comes on out. It's picked up by Rolfus and over the blue line. Got by Mikatowski right in a shot and a sprawling save. Oh, what a save by Van de Walker. Swing on the left side, feeding it ahead. That center ice, O'Brien has skated off. And the Cougars shoot it in. Van de Walker saving again. Oliver with the puck. He's tied up. It comes back of the net. It's cleared around on the right wing side, but not out. Spear, a long screen shot that went wide to the left. Oliver tried to deflect it and couldn't make contact with the stick. Back to the right point. Ferguson, a shot. Van de Walker kicks it out. Now on the far side, it's O'Brien trying to clear, but it's held in by Ferguson. Fired back of the net. This is Chapman coming to the left of the goal. And he's checked very closely on the play by Mikatowski. Now the Packers come back at center ice. Hit over the line. It's offside. Too much running and around by South St. Paul now, Al. No question. They're a little confused. And give credit to Edina West. They're putting a lot of pressure on them right now. South St. Paul is going to have to break the momentum, have to get a little time, a little more composure. Edina has had an excellent last couple of minutes. How about that play of Vander Walker? Absolutely magnificent. Yeah. Look at this. Great save. Big save. Puck brought in, centered out. Oh, and unable to get it. Now here's a drive for the point by Plum. Goes off to the right of the goal. Olsen is there. He's checked in against the boards by Dalzell. The puck comes back in the net. Styles trying to work it loose. Dalzell chasing it on the far side. And the Cougars come up with it at center right. Across the South St. Paul line to the left corner. Phil Housley is there first, clearing it up the wing to Plum now. Plum dumping the center for Styles. Styles poking it ahead. It's brought in by Phil Housley, and he lost it. And it's cleared out to center ice by Claver. Rich wide pass. Here's a chance for Frisk in the right circle. Trying to put it in front, and a great defensive play by Dalzell, who fell to the ice to block the pass from the corner. Smothering it with his body, and we'll have a face-off. Frisk is now being pushed by Dalzell. And this could rest loose at any time, the way these guys are... Going after each other, hammer and tongs. We got a minute and four seconds left in regulation time. A tie score, one all, and a face off to the right of the South St. Paul goal. 
Larry Housley on to take the face off for the Packers. And his opponent on the draw will be Dave Maley. South St. Paul's been going two lines. Dino West, one, two, three. One, two, three. They're going to try and wear him down if they can. Back to Steer, and his pass comes up to center. He tried to slide it just inside the line. Now it's put back into the zone and picked off by Zwig. He clears it to center ice. Vidalic unable to control it. A long shot right on. Here's a rebound. Chance going right in. He hit the side of the net. Oh, right oh. there for DZ. And he hit the left side of the goal. And now the puck is cleared down the ice by the Packers coming back for the spear. We have an icing call. DZ had a great chance earlier, and he was tied up by Zwig and crashed into the goal post. Oh, this time he was just in a little too tight, Irby. Oh, yeah, and I thought one of South St. Paul players almost froze the puck in the crease. That means penalty shot. That means, wow. There's Vandewalker, and we'll look for the player that you're talking about, Herbie. It goes behind him, and you'll see him come in. Probably, I think it's going to be number five. Let's see. Nope. Number 11. Uh, he, he drops down to his knees right after that and comes up with a puck. Here it is again. The puck bounces out. Vanda Walker just putting on a, a great display of goaltending. Kabaski falls at center. Back in comes Maley. Maley dropping it in front. DZ turns and fires wide to the right. Maley falls over the goaltender. The puck comes into the slot area, and the Packers get it. Bringing it to center is Larry Housley to Sebasti in over the line now. Down in the circle to the left. Back in front of Larry Housley. A shot it scores! Larry Housley with five seconds to go! Oh my! What a goal! Kirby was up here pointing at Housley. He saw it coming. You saw it coming all the way. Yeah, I tell you. How many games will you see like that where Diana West has chances, 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 can't capitalize? South St. Paul goes down at one rush and capitalized, but there came Housley in the slot where you could just see him coming behind the play. I just had that little funny feeling. You start pointing at him. We gotta see that again. Look at here we go, and Housley's coming down the slot. So Baskin makes an excellent play. Here comes Housley down the slot. Bang, trickles just between his legs. What an upset. He had it, but just. Here comes Sebasti again to the outside. Housley up in the slot, held his, held his ground, didn't hurry, just trickled in. Fellas, we said earlier today that Jefferson's uh, beating Grand Rapids was a minor upset. Well, let me tell you, this will be a major upset. Everybody thought that Edina West would blow St. Paul out of it. What an upset. I gotta tell you guys something. I wouldn't want to pick a winner from here on in. Anything can happen this year. I've never seen six so evenly matched teams as we've seen in these three games today. Edina West has pulled their goalie. Empty net. Five seconds left. Why not? Bill Housley will take the face off. Bill Housley moving up to play forward on this very important face off. Plummins wig back on defense, and here comes Chapman, drives the shot, kicked out, rebound, it's over! The time is over, the game is over! It went in after the final buzzer, there's no time left. Good score, but the game is over. South St. Paul wins it, and he's trying to win, doesn't realize it yet. Now they do, now they're focused. Who scored? Was it good or not? The green light went on, now the red light's on. The green light went on, now the red light went on. If the green light went on first, the game is over. Well, this is going to be interesting. The red light cannot okay. go on when the green light is All on. All right, the referee's coming over. He's talking to the scorer's table. Could be an offside. Might have been an offside. First got the goal, but it's going to be West is upset. Offside. Offside. Oh, my gosh. Did you ever see a finish like that? Not only was it offside, but time had run out, so it doesn't matter either way. Boy, Dino West is going to be upset with that. Dino West outshot South St. Paul in the third period. 11 to 10. 17 to 10. 17 to 10. 18 to 10. 18 to 10. And what a finish. The Dino West, I'll tell you, they're just, what an upset. Number one team in the state. They come into this game heavily favored. And here's that finish. Three Brown and Vanderwalker. 
Offside, his time had he left, but what a shot, Herbie. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, I can remember when Mark Johnson scored in the last couple of seconds against the Russians, and I thought that was something, but I, oh. clear the ice except for the players. What an incredible finish. The game has to finish with a face-off, I believe. I mean, we got to work some more? That's not over yet? They moved it back to three seconds. Three seconds. Wait a minute, it may not be over yet. No, it might not. I'm telling you, what a gutting so, effort by Diana West. So what they called, Pete Jockety, was offside at three seconds. And we didn't hear the whistle because we couldn't hear the, the crowd whistle. noise. Oh. And we saw the clock, at, uh, neither did the timer, obviously, because he let the clock run through down to double zero. Wow. So we will have a face-off back outside the South St. Paul blue line. Well, I said earlier today, we're, we were going to have at least one upset. You have to in a tournament like this, and, and boy, this is a big one. Boy, you couldn't have three finer hockey games than the three that we've had no, so you're far right. today. You're right. You know, you hear that said so many times, but when you have two overtime games that end 4-3 in the afternoon, and then you have this thing, just, a, just outstanding. You know, Bob, uh, South St. Paul got off to a real good start, and I think uh, if we go back, they were rated number one in the state for a while, and then they had a little tough sledding, uh, what have you. But boy, I tell you, I, I surprised me Edina could play a physical game, and South St. Paul skated with them. Both well-rounded teams. This is the best game I've seen. And all due respect to the other two. All right, and they're we're lining, both great games. Lining up for the face-off. And this time, Larry Housley will take the key face-off for South St. Paul. It comes back in the zone to the right. Phil Housley lets it go to the corner, and now the game is over. And officially, the South St. Paul Packers have defeated the Edina West Cougars by a score of two to one. And they will advance to the championship semifinals tomorrow night. <laughs> what a game. Oh my gosh. What a game. Yeah. Final two Here's to one in favor of St. Paul. Last year, South St. Paul lost in overtime. Saint Paul at 14, this year, they 55. pull off the big upset over Number Dinah West. Larry Housley. There's not much more you can say about it. That's the end of the game. The final score, South St. Paul two, Edina West, Edina West two minutes, South one. St. Paul zero minutes. Shots on goal in the period, South St. Paul 10, game total 20. Audiences everywhere are discovering that Scanners is the mind-blowing shocker of the year. Scanners, rated R, coming soon. A special weekend sale is now in full swing at Wally McCarthy's Lindahl Olds. Over 700 new and used cars specially sale priced. A few examples, a 1980 Pontiac Bonneville, 7388. A 74 Lincoln Mark IV, 1875. A 1974 Saab 99 4-door, 1675. A 1977 Plymouth Fury 4-door, 2995. Come out and be a part of the greatest automobile sale ever at Wally McCarthy's Lindahl Olds. The middle of the night. What could happen? Sky cam's on the way. Uh, okay, tell him to set up the live shot. I'll meet him at the scene. What can happen in the middle of the night? News can happen. News that affects you. That's why the Eyewitness News team is on the job 24 hours a day, and they're the only full-time TV news people who are. 10-4, Sky cam. It's another example of the Eyewitness Advantage. Tic-Tac-Doe. When Genio host Wink Martindale, game show Tic-Tac-Doe, and the biggest money prizes in television history get together, they guarantee suspense, excitement, and lots of laughs on the number one game show in the country. Knowledge, luck, and big money make the game you played as a kid all grown up. Watch Wink Martindale, and you'll see why Tic-Tac-Doe is the number one game show. That's right. Don't miss Tic-Tac-Doe, Monday through Friday.
Well, you see the South St. Paul Packer marching band. They are really celebrating here at the Civic Center, celebrating a major, major upset in this, the 81 State High School Hockey Tournament. For a fellow who's been through quite a few exciting games in your career, I'll tell you, this was really a great one. Oh, I tell you, I was sweating on that. It was just an excellent game. I think we both get, you know, we just got caught up in the emotion of the thing, Bob. Uh, you know, you really have to give a lot to Edina West. A tough one. They had the momentum. They had the play. They had the every uh, the last three minutes as Edina, South St. Paul get that one great opportunity to score. Let's look at the highlights. And, and this was just a, a great, great hockey game. The two games we had earlier today were magnificent, but this one was just incredible. Let's pick up the action here. There you see it. Sapaski. Sapaski going right around. Here comes Larry Housley. It's a trailer. He trailed the play excellently. You could see him coming. Out of sight, out of mind, picked that puck up in the slot. Sobaski, that's a great name in South St. Paul. I think his father relative, Mel Sobaski, in the 50s, a great athlete. Housley, we already talked about Phil Housley. Larry Housley just played a super game. He logged so much ice time that last period. Oh, he, he just very intelligent. Look at this play here. and Yeah, yeah, you can see that in the replay of the offside. But boy, you, you Dinah West wasn't going to throw in the towel with five seconds left. Housley, I'll tell you, you saw it coming. You were standing up pointing. There he is. There yeah, he is. I could just, it just, I just saw him coming, and everybody else was looking the other way, and there he was. Oh, oh. there's some mighty happy people downstairs with Ed Cairo. Let's go down to Ed. Ed? All right. We have a Housley and a Vanderwalker and an exhausted coach back here named Doug Wood. We'll talk to him later. That's got to be a terrific feeling, especially in those late seconds. Yeah, it was. I don't know. I can't believe it now. It's still hit me yet. Got to thank a teammate on that, too. I'm surprised that he saw you way back there. Yeah, I know. I was screaming as loud as I can. I'm yelling in the slot. I, mean, I just shot it as hard as I could. I didn't really pick a corner enough. I just shot it. As a goaltending performance, have you ever come up with a better one? I don't think so. I think this is probably the best game that I've ever had playing as a goaltender. I don't know if anybody knows this, and I don't know if I should put my hand on this young man, because I don't know if I'm immune, but he's playing with chicken pox. <laughs> Doug Woog, how do you feel? I wish you had chicken pox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a great effort of these kids. And uh, like Larry's been sick, he hasn't played in six days in the ice. He's been home, sitting at the hotel. Uh, fantastic. I feel sorry for Edina because they had so many golden opportunities to score. And, and our goaltender was just fabulous. That's uh, sum it up. But our heart was there, too, uh, as an entire group. We, when you only give Edina one goal, you've had a heck of an effort. What was your plan against this team? We're going to finesse them. <laughs> Uh, we knew we had to play the body and try to disrupt them a little bit and irritate them uh, to some degree. And, and you, But that's easy to say when you go the X and O's, but somebody has to execute that. And maybe we're fortunate we scored at the time we did. We didn't, we'd have scored maybe with five minutes left. They might have come back a house of fire with five uh, and made it very difficult for them. But a great, great goal. And you know, it's typical of the seniors, I guess. They come through when the, when the chips are down and you've got good players like Larry and, and Greg and O'Brien and Sebaski and Swigger and uh, just, some, just some great <laughs> players, I guess. Eh? 22 names, right? Thank you all three. Congratulations on a terrific effort tonight. And of course, we'll see you tomorrow. Back to you, Bob. A classic, a classic high school hockey game. Lots of hard hitting, tremendous offensive play, great goaltending, just, just a, a picture perfect game. And we've got more. We've got another game coming up, well, not too long from now. We'll be back with more exciting action of the 1981 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament when we continue after station identification. Until now, severe storm...